Excuse us. Pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. What's up? We got the drink. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. Hey, guys. Sorry I'm late. The bathroom here is nuts. Oh, my God. You made it. Yay. It's about time, Nathan. Damn. Shh. The movie's starting. One, two, Freddy's coming for you. <laughs> Three, four, better <laughs> lock your door. Five, six, grab a cruise. Do we want to see how long he can go? Seven, eight, gonna stay up late. He's almost there. Nine, ten, never sleep again. Keep going. Oh, no, that's all I had written down. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the show, y'all. Eleven, twelve, I'm afraid of elves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is the Silver Linings playlist. Yeah. Yeah, I'm Nathan Simmons. Uh, this is the show where we try to find the silver linings in some of cinema's bleakest endings. And, you know, guys... We try to find a tune, too. Hmm. Yeah. And being dead wasn't a problem, but being forgotten and reviewing this movie, now that's a bitch. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> This is going to be a fucking nightmare. I don't mean that in a pun either. This is going to be oh, just tragic. We're taking it as a pun, buddy. <laughs> oh, my God. How did we end up here? Um, because I chose this movie. I, you um, know what? We... I was going to say, can we call a truce between all three of us? Sure. We have somehow successfully tortured the shit out of the other two absolutely not <sighs> well so so here's the thing you you did mention to me when we were i had a different movie programmed for this week and then <laughs> you mentioned to me at one point like oh somehow we haven't you know silver linings hasn't done a nightmare movie or a friday the 13th movie and That's i true. said well fuck why don't we close out the summer with a summer camp movie kind mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. uh and do both of them with freddy versus jason which look Sounds good on paper. Sounds good on paper. Bad movie. Bad movie. Uh, I had a lot of fun revisiting it. <laughs> oh, I had such a good time watching this. Okay. I do. I will say, so my girlfriend and I have been watching both of these series like a, a, a little bit at a time. She's seen the first four Nightmares and she's seen the first three Fridays. And then we watched this one. Mm -hmm. And at the end of this movie, I asked her, was this the worst out of both series that you've seen so far? And she said, there's no question. <laughs> <laughs> She's not wrong. And then you broke up with her immediately, right? <laughs> <laughs> I said, excuse me, Il Nino's on this soundtrack. What are you talking about? Uh, please be quiet. El Nino is playing right now. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear Spine Shank. Dustin, how excited are you that we are covering a movie that was under two hours? Oh, I got to tell you, I was surprised because, yeah. you know, I saw that runtime and I was like, wait a minute, this is this is something different that I'm experiencing here. But I got to say, it, it was fantastic seeing uh, Tommy Lee Jones not be a villain for once. And Harrison Ford with a beard. <laughs> Excuse me. Is fantastic. Wait. In the, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? What, are we, what movie are we talking about? We not... Freddy versus Jason. Oh, I thought we were doing The Fugitive because that's what I watched. But man, <laughs> that was a fantastic movie. What? I never seen it before. Oh, good, good. I'm glad. I'm glad you did yeah. something. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you should check out the sequel, U.S. Marshals. I actually love it. Yeah, it's good. I heard it's garbage. So uh, okay, well maybe I'll watch it. I had a good time. I had a good time. It's fun. No, I, w I went to HBO Max. I went to the F section. Uh -huh. I saw Freddy versus Jason, and I was like, mm. and then right below that was a Fugitive. And I was like, say. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> Honestly, great call mm -hmm. on your part, sir. Mm -hmm. No, Harrison Ford with a beard. Uh, I, I I own this on Blu-ray along with all of the Friday the 13th and <laughs> Nightmare on Elm Street films. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I'm not. You need to be put on a watch list. So <laughs> let's just be clear. This movie did not release on Blu-ray until years after it had mm -hmm. come out. Yeah. I think that's pretty fair. So you... you <laughs> like had to seek that out oh i bought the uh, i have the you 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 heard it was dropping on blu-ray and you're like yeah gotta have it well, no i have the scream factory friday the 13th box set the the <laughs> the 130 dollar box set God. That, that's all of the movies we gotta have an intervention for nathan malley i you we can't. and you and you have a girlfriend yeah <laughs> uh, well i didn't when i bought these <laughs> well she she lives in another state you wouldn't know her i mean oh she, go she to a different school, school. Yeah, yeah so, somehow, but we live uh, together. She's Canadian. We, we, uh, well, speaking of Canadian, this whole fucking movie, but before we get there, we have two guests that have just been waiting on the sidelines and I'm sure have some thoughts. I'm so excited. Um, we had to bring them back. They were on the hide and seek episode and we thought, you know what? 
there that was also a terrible horror movie we got to keep them keep the train going so <laughs> without further ado please welcome back brendy and jen hey guys hey. <laughs> <laughs> so i guess that shows like what you guys think of us because you keep bringing us on for just terrible movies <laughs> y'all hey, that was fair. how i got started on this show yes. dustin kept saying like nathan it's a shitty movie we should bring nathan in <laughs> yeah exactly and then look what happened he got absorbed into the show that's so, right you know you come back for two more of these and you're you're full-time staff <laughs> that's right and then you can make them watch whatever shit you want <laughs> can you just do us a solid with a good movie just, uh, you know please. what I'll bring you back for a good I'm one. Begging, right? Because this is reaching hate crime territory. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, lots of hate speech in this movie. There's yeah, I was about to say there's a solid two minutes of this movie that is a hate crime. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah, there, this movie is filled with hate crimes. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah there there are a couple of comments. That's, <laughs> yeah, it was cringy. Wild. We'll get there. We'll absolutely get there. wild. We will get there. I look. I'm gonna go ahead and call an audible. Yeah, this is five people trying to talk over one another in this episode. Rightly, rightfully so is going to be chaotic as balls so sure I, I, i'm gonna have to to chime in with like a like a judge's gavel every now That's and then when this gets out of order but i would i'm gonna keep this above the belt watch yourself counselors okay we, we're gonna we're gonna do this right all right so look anyway the thing about i'm kidding <laughs> no but the, the i will say right off the like the top i, I have more notes for this movie than i have for any other we've covered including I, I jurassic that. world i whole i wholeheartedly believe that i took notes on this one. Oh wow which is rare for me and you finished watching it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's both rare occurrences for me usually i don't take notes or even finish the movie sure sure <laughs> right off the top since since dc dropped his little bit i will exclusively be because you know this movie <laughs> referred to as fuck pig <laughs> it's <laughs> this movie it's not great but i'm gonna I'm show some respect uh -huh. to the leads no no and i will no. Ex no, no 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 listen no. listen 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 i'm gonna refer to them exclusively as frederick krueger and jv esquire oh, I think uh, oh. the humans I, yeah i don't give a shit about the humans sorry no 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 they're they're cattle for slaughter yeah, what if mally was like first things first kelly Rowland, oscar worthy performance <laughs> shut it down look, oh, hey, shut look, down. look kelly. the only person i'm going to bat for in this movie is Catherine isabel oh, oh i love her yes. her Amazing. She's wasted in this movie, though. Yes. She's fantastic. Wasted in this movie. What was, who was she? She was the lead girl? She's the red hat. She's the PJ Soul stand-in. Gibbs. Gib. She was Gibbs. Ginger yeah. Snaps. Yeah. She's amazing. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Ginger Snaps is so good. Absolutely. And Hannibal. Oh, Hannibal. Yeah, she um has a very troubled relationship with this movie, yes. which we will talk about. Oh, yep. Oh, yeah. So that poor girl. Yeah, poor girl indeed. So this is, of course, listener, Freddy versus Jason, the the ultimate mashup. <laughs> uh, I put that in quotes because uh -huh. I I mean we're gonna get there, but there is so 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 much to talk about with this movie. So yeah. Oh, sorry, Dustin. What what year was this? Like this was post nine eleven, right? This is a post nine eleven world. This is two thousand three. This is a post nine eleven world. This is oh, two thousand three. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Two thousand two. Or three. Doesn't three. Yeah. So Doesn't one reason why this is terrible. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Lines up. It was a different time. All right. <laughs> and you can say those words in that movie in that order and not die. <laughs> well, <laughs> pretty much the time that solidified millennials lives sucking. Yeah. yeah. Like that was the portal we walked through where it was like, okay, there's no point in return. Nope. Yeah. This, this is like somehow a touchstone in cinema for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> yep. It's, <laughs> It's in. This is when millennials peaked. Y yeah. <laughs> did we? Oh I know, I'm like, did we? <laughs> like at this point, this is what this is when you want. To, like maybe you should speak for yourself on that one. <laughs> Are you telling me? Hey, I don't know about y'all. From 2003, it's all just been downhill. <laughs> Are you sure it wasn't 9/11 that did that? <laughs> No, Are Mally gonna, doesn't believe in 9 11. You're going to stand with that statement? I don't think 2003 is my, when I peaked. Like, that was like when I started my goth phase. Like, that. Hell yeah. That's yeah. not yeah. my peak. Oh, no, that's that's peak. Oh, I remember those days. <laughs> oh, yeah. High school. You can yeah. I thought she said golf phase. <laughs> no, that was middle school. And thankfully, I mean, I'm old. speaking of goth phases. Like th this movie has a score by Graham Ravel, who did the score for The Crow. So like that's Ugh. some that's some goth bona fides right there. But True. I have a question. 
Is that why there's so much new metal on this? Because it was 2003. There's so much. I, yeah, I heard that, and I was like, yeah, this is a very like early 2000s movie because all the new metal. Oh, for sure. It's 2003. It's required to have new metal in it. Yeah. It's by law you had to have it in there. Yeah, 100. percent Like I'm listening to it. I'm like, is this fucking stained or some shit? <laughs> I mean, they turned the Jason theme into new metal somehow. I'm impressed. Yeah. They couldn't afford. You know what the thing is, Brandy? They couldn't even afford stained. That's that's how <laughs> shitty this movie is. <laughs> I owned the soundtrack to this movie and it was Nathan, Nathan, a fucking course you do. Nathan. I did. I did. I did. And it was put out by Roadrunner Records and Roadrunner oh Records God, fucking yeah. ran. They ran the game on movie soundtracks at this time. That's this true. is why yeah. they did. this is why the 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 Daredevil soundtrack this same year also had like a bunch of new metal bands on oh, it. No. Wait, but you said it didn't have a budget. This is the highest grossing Friday the 13th movie yeah really oh i know oh this How? had the highest this did have the highest <laughs> budget of any of them yep. this was 15 million dollars this made more money than the past friday the 13th movies yeah oh yeah this is the highest grossing out of all both franchises. Wow. It's the second grossing Elm Street movie, and I don't know how. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess I guess that does make sense because you're combining the fan base of like both of those movies. So I right. can see that. Exactly. Here's the thing. Here's the thing about this movie. This movie was massive. And no, not only yeah. massive because of how well it did at the box office, people clamored for this movie like since the fucking 80s yeah i remember it being a big deal mm -hmm. yeah also because it took almost two decades to get yeah. the damn thing made like yeah. people yeah. were waiting for this since 1993 when freddy pulls jason's mask down and jason goes to hell but at what cost Why? <laughs> right what does that do for the greater good lots of <laughs> countless lives i mean well yeah i haven't watched all the nightmare on elm street movies in a while because uh -huh. like I I went through them all in college, but I haven't revisited them since then. Mm -hmm. So I completely forgot. I'm good. I don't have to do this. No, I I actually like N Nightmare on Elm Street. The Friday the 13th movies, I was always like, Jason was never like for me right. a whole lot. I always thought he was just kind of like big and dumb. I mean, That's fair. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm in the same boat. I'm in the same boat. I was always a Michael Myers guy. Yeah, I was a Michael Myers household. Michael Myers is okay. Yeah. Although, Jason Takes Manhattan is a great dark comedy. It's hilarious. Not Jason X? Oh, God, Not Jason X. I <laughs> fucking love Jason X. <laughs> Jason X is just straight up a comedy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you have this movie to thank for Jason X because the whole reason Jason X got greenlit in the first place yeah. is because they were still trying to make this movie and they're like we got to put something out and so they put out Jason X. Yeah, and we'll we'll get into it a little bit later but Which is better? There were 17 different screenwriters that yes. worked on this <sighs> over the course of uh, over a decade. Oh my and god. And like yeah. And, and like after I've just okay peek behind the curtain i've read a book about all of these different versions of the screenplay and we got the best one somehow. Oh, I believe oh it. God. I believe it. We're charging someone with a. We're gonna try charge someone with a crime, right? Yeah. This is an assault on my eyes. <laughs> right. <laughs> and my ears. Well, um, look, I'm gonna bypass what our history is with this movie because I'm sure we all saw this sure. at the right time or the wrong time. I saw this in the theater. This was the first. So did I. This was the first of either series that I saw in the theater. So that was a big deal for me, too. Oof, I was disappointed that Wes Craven wasn't involved with it at all. I know. Yeah. 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 Question. Does anyone has his thoughts on this movie? Before he passed? Have his thoughts? Yeah. Well, I'm sure not good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're like, what the fuck did you do with my character? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sh should we do the background up top or towards the end, do you think? Let's do it at the end. Okay. I'm down with that. Because there's there's so much to get into. Um, yeah, yeah. I will say the director of this, Ronnie Yu, directed a movie that Mally loves quite a bit. No, uh, no. Didn't he do Gone in 60 Seconds? Or am I, am I wrong about that? I have no idea, but... Yeah, I don't either. I, I do love Gone in 60 Seconds. He has actually directed... Bride of Chucky. Bride of Chucky. Never mind. Yeah, he did. He he did not direct Gone in sixty seconds. Okay. I'm with, I'm a dirty fucking liar. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, Bride yes. of Chucky, which is the best of that series to me. <laughs> like, Whoa. I, Hot take. Whoa! It's so Hot take. fun. As, aside from, hey, then I might be in the right in the same boat. Yeah, I guess it depends. Like, if you're somebody that likes campy movies, then yeah, that's probably the best which one. Which I do. Yeah. Then yeah. There you go. There's doll sex, so no. <laughs> uh, no, thank you. Nathan does love terrible films. Yeah, but, like, 
But if you like actual, like, if you going into it wanting it to be a for real, like, horror movie, then it's like, nah, that's, that's a flop. true. I mean, it was definitely inspired by, like, um, Scream and New Nightmare yes. and all those meta, yeah. like, horror movies. And... Oh, I thought you were going to say garbage. <laughs> Sorry. God. Um, <clears throat> all right. Well, without further ado, let's get into some discussion behind the history involving Freddy, quote, versus, quote, Jason. It's a legal drama, by the way. It all takes place in the court. Sure, of course. <laughs> um, I'd watch that movie. I would watch that movie, too. I love a courtroom drama. Freddy v. Jason, Dawn of Justice. <laughs> um, the year is 2003, as we mentioned. The director, as we have also mentioned, is Ronnie Yu. Mm -hmm. uh, the movie stars Monica Kina, Kelly Rowland, Jason Ritter, Chris Marquette, Lachlan Monroe, and Robert England. Yeah. Uh, as per... No, respre no respect for Catherine. Yeah, not, not mentioned <laughs> Roger Ebert's uh, review. Uh, the budget that I found was $30 million. Um, Nathan, you have the book, though. It might, that might be a, a bit of a different number than what you have. I remember reading it as fifteen million, but I, I that uh, that's probably right. Well, you know what? When you when you when you factor in uh, marketing, it probably it probably doubles it. Yeah, yeah. Um, it managed to gross one hundred and sixteen point seven million dollars worldwide. Oh my god! Also, you're not factoring in all the screenwriters that were paid for movies that didn't that's get true. made. <laughs> that's true. Um, and the movie currently sits at a 41% on Rotten Tomatoes. I am shocked. Interesting. Yeah. I'm shocked it's that high. Yeah. It's incredible that this didn't get a sequel. I mean, yeah. it was a smash hit. It was a summer blockbuster. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know why. Instead, they just rebooted both franchises. Uh -huh. yeah. But then did nothing with those either. Right. True. It's insane. Oh, yeah. Which the, I, the Friday the 13th remake did really well. Yeah, I, I barely remember either one of those reboot. Well, I kind of remember the Nightmare on Elm Street reboot. Yeah. But, yeah. Like, well, I do know this is Robert England's last yeah. Freddy Look, outing. Yeah. I just want to say shout out to Robert England. He was... He gave it his all. Yeah, shout out. He was having fun. I'm just yeah. like, I just appreciate that, like, any iteration of Freddy they ask him to do, he's just like, yep, I'm on board. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll do it on the Goldbergs. Yeah, even on the Mortal Kombat game. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, man, yeah. I remember when they announced that DLC, I was so hyped. Right. And I think it helps that this movie is more of a Nightmare on Elm Street movie than it is a Friday the 13th oh, yeah. movie. Oh, yeah, for like, sure. For no, sure. It's so much a Freddy movie. Yeah, as somebody who is a Freddy fan, like, I appreciate that part of it. Yeah. You guys, wow. You're going to disrespect Jason when he <laughs> had the most kills? Fuck Jason. He does get the most kills. <laughs> yeah, Freddy gets, like, one kill in this movie. But fuck Jason, though. <laughs> Jason has, like, 20 23 kills and I respected <laughs> most of them. Ain't nobody checking for Jason with his lazy eye. <laughs> He's doing his best. Damn. <laughs> Roasted. No, all all Jason <laughs> slander over here. I don't care. <laughs> Let's take um a dive back into the world of 2003. Sure. With the trailer for Freddy vs. Jason, which oh, I can oh, no. Yeah, I, I buckle up. <laughs> Alright, let me take a turn. I have a memory attached to this trailer that I'll tell you after. Okay. 1980, fear was born. The nightmare began. <laughs> Yeah, what does it just have voiceover? This needs it. Yeah, I couldn't tell if that was the trailer. <laughs> the <laughs> legends come to it's it's also got the you wouldn't steal a car font. <laughs> <laughs> I think me and Nathan just made the trailer better. <laughs> My nightmare. Oh, this music. No. Amazing. This is really similar to the trailer music for next week's movie. Yes. Were movie trailers like this back then? Yeah, oh, oh yes. yeah. Oh yeah. Is this a lost memory? Yeah. Oh god, that fucking worm. Oh, uh. not something we'll talk about. No, yeah, no, I can't wait to get to that. I'm waiting for that. Also, the best shot in the movies in the trailer. Yeah. With the wrong uh, color coding on it. Yeah. Um, and a and a final line that's not in the film. Yep. Uh, the I remember seeing this in the theater before Matrix Reloaded. Oof. And Same. Being so fucking hype for it and getting viscerally like nauseously angry when i heard uh some redneck in the front row as the titles popped up on the screen go the whales run dry what? <laughs> and I, was, okay. I said i said fuck you. i didn't say fuck you i wanted to <laughs> You should have. Yeah, I think you. I you agree. Should've. I was like, he doesn't get it. He doesn't know how long they've tried to make this. That man shot his <laughs> shot. He sure did. Yeah. 
Well, before we get into the movie proper, um, Brandy and Jen, I think this might not have been on when you guys were on, but we have a new segment where I like to try to think of um, a cocktail or a beverage that falls in line with the movie Mm -hmm. that's kind of on theme for what the movie is. So for this one, I think the obvious choice would have been like a Bloody Mary. Yeah. Because there's so much fucking blood, but I fucking hate Bloody Marys. No, yeah, that fucking tomato juice. I mean, it's vodka and spaghetti sauce. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're drinking Campbell's soup. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Um, so I found this drink. It's, al- it's alcoholic vegetable soup. <laughs> I like, uh, is it a drink called the Springwood Splasher? It's, it's <laughs> not, but that's a much better name than what I got. This is from um, another podcast I found called the Alcoholywood Podcast. Ooh, love that. They have a drink called Wake Aid, kind of like lemonade, but oh. Wake. That's dumb. It's a dumb name. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the ingredients, and you tell me what you guys think. But okay. this, I mean, I've already made it. I haven't tried it yet. It was sitting right here in front of me. It's three raspberries that have been muddled. It's Wait, one and a half you, ounce. Huh? What does that mean? <laughs> muddled. It's like the, um, when you kind of like crush it up. Oh, know? you squish them in your hands, bro. <laughs> and then nice. I roll them around into little balls. On the table. <laughs> I'll make a Play-Doh snake. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. And then it's one and a half ounce whiskey. Okay. Two ounces of black cherry cola. Ooh. And some bitters. Oh. This sounds... I want to try this. Yeah, I'll drink that. Yeah, sounds good. Well, I'll tell you what it looks like. It looks like someone shredded a dead rat and put it in a drink. Because Delicious. It's, the muddled raspberries, it just... I, I mean, the whole point is it's supposed to be a little, like blood and guts, I guess. But yeah, uh, I've always said muddled drinks are just uh, they're 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 tricky. You don't even know what muddled means. <laughs> <laughs> you uncultured swine. No, I was asking that for you guys. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Some of us might not know what muddled is. Why don't you tell us? Yeah, let me try this real quick and I'll let you guys know. OK. Oh, God. It's it's not great. Oh, no. Oh, I mean, it's just, I don't like raspberries to begin with. So I'm starting to think Dustin's just not good at making drinks because every single accurate every <laughs> single week. You're like, actually, this is shit. This Cosmo's not even good. It just tastes like vodka. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's probably mm. true. <laughs> every single week. I follow the recipes every time. I uh-huh. promise. Maybe you're just, it's okay to be bad at something. That's fine. <laughs> sure, sure. It's like me when I get a HelloFresh box. I end up making like just the most disgusting garbage, even though I follow the directions. <laughs> never, it never looks like the picture. I'm like, absolutely I not. fucked up somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to drink this black cherry cola instead. <laughs> okay. Dustin. Just add that to the list of things you're not good at, man. That's fine. I could be bad at cocktailing. I have no use. It's it's not a real skill for me anyway. <laughs> so guys, uh, red uh red new line logo. Did that make you happy? Yeah. Well, happy is not the right word. Dude, I don't care if it's just nostalgia, but the new line logo gets me fucking high every time. Yeah. Same same with the dimension logo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I I immediately was just like, "Oh, I'm settling in for a Blade movie." And it was not a Blade <laughs> movie. Yeah. <laughs> It was not. It was not. It was not. Some motherfuckers always trying to ice skate uphill. <laughs> <laughs> then you get the, um, what does that mean? Get... You just made that up. It's my favorite line. It's, like, it's so good. It's provocative. Get some people going. We get um, both a little Freddy Stinger and the, the Jason Stinger. Yeah. Here, like the theme songs, which is kind of cool. Yeah. The only time we hear the Elm Street theme in the movie. Yeah. I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is, I think we mentioned before, this is basically Freddy's movie yeah. that Jason just happens to star in. Oh, yeah. I got to say, who is who here is like the big fan of Freddy? Ver- like between the two, who's the Freddy person here? Anybody? No. I mean, the Freddy movies, I think, are more compelling for sure. No, yeah, I I like Nightmare. Yeah, yeah, Nightmare is better movies for sure. So yeah. it's hard for me to say I'm a Freddy fan because he's That's true. Bad news bears like all around. <laughs> but like, but bad news. Quite, is he a pedophile? Yeah. Yeah. Well, is that? Is that confirmed? That was going to be my question. That's what I was getting I think, to. Yeah, that's what that's what I've always been confused because like yeah they because like in the first few movies they always made it seem like he was a child killer. They play very fast and loose. Like, yeah, yeah, like they there wasn't any like sexual like like overtones. Right. But okay. in the but in the reboot one they really harped on him being right. a yeah, pedophile, sure. and I was like, wait. 
that's always like the problematic part. Right. But I always, I just always appreciate Freddie's personality right. and just like his remarks. <sighs> but it's so grating. It gets, it gets too much, it, especially in the later movies. Oh yeah, it just yeah. becomes like bitch. Okay, that's funny though. <laughs> I laugh every time. <laughs> I no, I do love that uh, Rick and Morty. I do love that Rick and Morty made fun of that right. yeah. that yeah. character doing that. <laughs> like, oh, bitch. I had never seen either the Friday movies or. The nightmare movies right uh, until uh this earlier this year i mean i'd seen the two reboots uh-huh. and i was like you know what it's finally time I, I i need to sit down and watch these right um they're mostly fucking garbage movies <laughs> i can't believe people like them what, like the friday 13th either eat pick i mean the nightmare's got like two good movies maybe three nightmare has some really fun effects i mean the first one at least was good yeah first nightmare is good dream warriors is good I love dream warriors and new nightmare but do you think people just enjoy the lore more than the movies maybe okay i think they just have nostalgia for it yeah right. yeah just like i mean how the halloween movies are also mostly garbage but right yeah i like them a lot more oh yeah i mean these are all movies that like are reflective of their times too absolutely exactly. yeah and yeah. for me as a kid there was just like this kind of forbidden quality to them like oh, the 100%. fact that i fi- when i finally got to watch them i was i was so excited to like dive into that world and yeah and, and uh to, to to the point about uh freddie's backstory in the original screenplay for for nightmare he was explicitly referred to as a as a like a child predator and they they lessened that because they were like look if we want to launch a franchise we can't we have to kind of be more vague about it Mm. which is also why it's strange because by the fourth movie he's like an mtv vj and like like making jokes putting on sunglasses and yeah yeah the thing the thing that's weird specifically about the freddy movies is the studio has put you in this awkward position where you know, with slashers, it's always like the first one. You don't know anything about them. You're rooting for people to survive. Right. But then as the slasher genre goes on, it just becomes these are just random people yes. that you're rooting for the killer to kill. Yeah. Yeah. And yep. then when you make that slasher. Especially in Friday. Oh, yeah. A fucking pedophile. Right. <laughs> it's like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. Do I root for him or do I root for the people trying to kill him? No, yeah. That's why in the first one, like, I, like, started to like Freddy because, like, they didn't really put that on front street right Mm -hmm. he was a pet they just made it seem like oh he just target like kids like as kills right not that he wanted to fuck them so brandy you're like one day you're like hold up wait what no yeah as a as like as yeah as i was like watching the rest of them and it started unfolding i was like uh you can you can root for a child murderer yeah a child murder because it's like they're all murdering people so it's like he's just murdering little people but (laughs) Sorry. But when you I'm add rape into it, it's like, wait. <laughs> literal little people. I'm like, wait, that's hilarious. Yeah, that's hilarious. That's what children are. He's murdering Vern Troyer. <laughs> He's a very niche murderer. Look, are children not small humans? You that's got me true. there. I can't argue with that. Tiny little monsters. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I mean, I guess on Team Jason, he was a, like neglected out of camp, and that's super fucked up. Uh, they need to do their job and not bang while a kid is dying. True, <laughs> tragic backstory. Tragic backstory. Yeah, but I'm also like, why was he so hung up on like avenging his shitty mom? Right. Well, this movie kind of changes his backstory a little bit. Before it was bit. just oh, it did. Well, yeah, in in the originals. He was neglected at camp. This movie does a lot of heavy lifting to make sure that you know which of these serial killers you're supposed to root for. Like yeah. Yeah. they they make they make Freddy grosser. They make Jason like a bullied kid. Um, they also give Jason a fear of water that's never come up before. Thank you. He's in water in every single movie. How many times have we seen this zombie come up out of the fucking lake? Right. Yes. I was gonna say like. In Friday the 13th movies, doesn't he always come out from the water? Like, yes. all of a sudden he's scared he of it? He loves it. <laughs> well, and he's literally only afraid of water in that one scene. Yeah. yeah. Never comes up again. Like, they're fighting by the lake later, and he's not like, oh, shit. I mean, he gets, they both get thrown into the lake, and nothing happens. They just keep going. Yeah. He's good. Yeah, the mo- at a certain point in the movie, I was like, okay, when did this turn into Jason's therapy appointment? Like, <laughs> right. We're, we're unpacking a lot of trauma right now. Um, I have a question. Can I be just be team no one? Yeah. No humans? I mean, yeah. Yes, that's fair. <laughs> oh, 
I, everyone deserved to die. Even the human characters in this movie are so fucking unlikable. Every single one. Everyone. Look, that was that was one that was one of my notes. Was like I feel like we haven't had that in horror movies in a while. That I kind of appreciated from this movie. That like it's usually easier for you to like get through horror movies. When, especially slasher ones when everybody and it sucks mm-hmm. so it's yeah. like you don't care about them dying and yeah. i'm like okay this movie kind of like takes me back to that space when a lot of the slasher films were just it was like <laughs> everybody was shitty so yeah. they died you were like all right cool yeah let's see how these assholes die <laughs> right yeah it's just a bunch of like lustful like kids okay these are not kids these are grown adults these yeah. are grown ups yeah these are like 25 year olds playing 17 <laughs> yeah nah these motherfuckers these these motherfuckers at least 30 yeah yeah but they're supposed to be teenagers yeah everyone there i'm like you you were not in high school absolutely not also i always was just curious like what was slasher films like creators obsession with teens fucking Uh, um that's just culture uh, i I think you answered your own question (laughs) yeah i think you just did that's just how it is sure but i'm just like why yeah Yeah, i don't know well speaking of fucking i waited i'm like all right how long do we have to receive boobs three minutes okay i want before we get there before we get there we, uh, this is actually great that you two are on the show um brandy and jam because we were talking about this off air and i debated on whether or not we should talk about it on the air but now that we're now that we're here <laughs> <laughs> oh god what is what is this from a from a woman's perspective i want to hear what you to think you know slasher movies are known for having nudity of having topless women and everything yeah but for some reason it's and maybe this is just a post 2000s thing. It's always women with fake breasts. Oh, the fakest. Yeah. Right? And it's all over sexualization things. They do that in the Friday reboot, too. Well, I know girls with implants and they don't look like what they look like in this movie. Right. Oh, yeah. Their no. boobs look great. No, yeah. There's some girls that get really good boob jobs. So sure, you can tell sure. when they're fake. Right. Not the girls in this movie. Nah. Yeah. And then that's another thing. It's like these are supposed to be teams, but like you all have, you guys have women with fake boobs in this. Yeah. Okay. Well, going into the nudity nudity what happened with with the girl from ginger snaps and oh, the director, yeah. mm-hmm. reading about that i'm like how was this a lot but this pre weinstein obviously but i'm like how did this poor girl get roped into this but i guess it worked out because she's the body she's double, the body yeah. Yeah. at the same time yeah he was trying to trying to talk her into doing a nude scene even though it was in her contract that she wouldn't which is so fucked up yeah, yeah. And she, I, I guess she wasn't i don't know but it's just really upsetting but yeah, yeah. yeah all these movies just have obvious fake tits and there's nothing i can do about it okay <laughs> asked and answered <laughs> there is. yeah i mean granted a lot of things from this era like relating to that like socially like it's a lot of cringe yeah, yeah. oh yeah honestly like gender wise race wise like it's sexuality wise like it it's a lot of cringe things like there was a lot of things we were watching like as like kids and teenagers as millennials that we were just like yeah like this is this is normal but it was all like so Mm -hmm. i know you asked us but did men like that i (laughs) mean i it does nothing for me i just they look very fake i'm just like i don't get it you're asking men to have taste (laughs) but it's fake (laughs) you're asking men No, I mean, I, on this rewatch, it did it did nothing for me. The right, only thing I, I thought of was, oh, this poor girl. Like, that's the only thing I thought of. And I was like, she should sue her surgeon. Oh, Brandy, yep. is this progress in society? <laughs> I'm like, oh, poor girl. <laughs> well, I mean, here's the thing. I, I, it depends on what you're trying to do, because if you're going for this, you know, re- retelling of the slasher genre as a as a meta thing like you're like you're trying to do cabin in the woods and like right. deconstruct the, the slasher genre then it makes oh, sense no. No, no, no. no that is not what this movie is doing no no no, I was gonna say, no 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 if you're doing that then it's okay to have the nudity it's leaning into all of its worst instincts yeah it's like all of the stereotypical tropes yes. which is part of what like made this movie boring too yeah it, it did it does the tropes without any self-awareness that they are tropes like yeah or that the tropes are played out by this point you know wait speaking of poor girl not to fast forward but the scene where is that necrophilia no i didn't sign up for that yeah no thank you oh okay yeah i was i was like that kid definitely needs to die (laughs) no no not that one no it's the dream no it's the dream sequence where freddie is oh fucking a dead girl oh she's not dead then she's not dead like but 
Oh, you talking about in the flashback? Yeah. Oh, that, oh, that scene. Oh, that. I think yeah, I think that's just a nightmare sequence. Yeah. 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 I wrote that down. I was like, I did, and also oh, when yeah. the girls passed out in the cornfield and she's yeah. gonna get sexually assaulted. I'm like, I don't want any of this. Right. No. No, I agree. Am I a terrible person because I laughed at that part? Well, when he got yeeted across the field, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was the best part of the, that scene. Is old buddy. That was hilarious. It's one of Jason's <laughs> great moments in that movie. <laughs> Save the day in a sense. Oh, unfortunately, he also kills Gib at the same time. But yeah. 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 Let's 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 go back because we're yeah. getting ahead of ourselves. We, in order for us to accurately do this movie, we have to go beat by beat because otherwise we're going to be. No, that's OK. Let's jump back to the beginning. I need to know. I need to know how this is hell for Jason. <laughs> I know. He gets to kill people every single second. It's amazing. Or like how if he is this supposed to be a nightmare? Or? I don't know. He's it seems like he's having a great fucking time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's fucking thriving. Can I tell you the best part about this opening scene? Though, yeah, yeah. Is this <laughs> this girl. This girl jumps into the lake, and then within seconds, she's right back out. <laughs> yeah, yep. I also like her little, like, she, like, waves her boobs at the trees and then just goes, okay, fuck you then. <laughs> and then she dips into the fucking lake. And then, and then decides she's scared. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and then we get this actress this this recast uh not betsy, betsy palmer, palmer. <laughs> yeah yeah um doing uh doing the most uh i i was delighted by freddie in a sweater <laughs> dude she is going for it yeah <laughs> yeah she is going for it well and it's it's interesting too that they make the sweater red as like a way to tip you off it's not sure actually jason's mom instead of the blue yeah yeah, yeah. You think that was on purpose, or do you think no, they I just don't. forgot? No, no, I think, okay. I think they forgot. <laughs> there's this, there's, so Ronnie Yu, the director, had only seen Friday Part 1 and The First Nightmare on Elm Street. Those are the only movies. He didn't like this franchise when he signed on. Nice. But he went for it. <laughs> yeah, and when you listen to the commentary, he's constantly saying shit that's not true. Like, it, when, when Kia pulls his mask off, he goes, oh, Jason's mask up a little bit, he uh -huh. goes, this is the first time anyone has ever seen under Jason's mask. And I was like, oh, you God. see that motherfucker's face in all the movies. Yeah, yeah. No. All of them. How embarrassing for him. Yeah, literally every single one. It's wild. I mean, let's be honest. This is not the, the Jason that we deserve for this movie anyways, because sure. no. this is a replacement guy. This is Ken Kurtzinger, who That's is right. not good as Jason no. at all. He is in Jason Takes Manhattan, though. He's mm -hmm. the guy that gets thrown in the diner that gets thrown into a mirror mm -hmm. by no Kane Hodder. No shit. <laughs> yeah. But also, like, how can you tell, like, who plays Jason? Like, he's always got a ski mask on. There is a, there is a mannerism to, to yeah, Jason that Kane sure. Hodder, who is known for playing Jason, like, brings to it. There's Kane Hodder's Jason has, like, a raging bull kind of... Yes. Um, like, I don't know. He he he's got like he has like heaving shoulders. He's he. he you know what? I'm gonna say it. His Jason's a scamp. His Jason <laughs> likes to toy with people. His Jason likes to z z z zip people up. In it's the season of scamps on the silver linings. Yeah. Really went there, huh? I don't know, Brandy. I'm with you. I'm like, it's all the same to me at this you, point. You, you, can, you can tell the difference. Some some Jasons are very rote. I mean, like, I, are, I, I had already said that I haven't been a big Friday 13th person, so... Sure. sure. But he's, he's the guy who will zip someone up in a sleeping bag and then smack another person in a sleeping yes. bag. Yep. Oh, yeah, that is funny. <laughs> okay, that's iconic. I love it. Wow, yeah. I'll see that. But no, this 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 Jason is is played as just a dullard. He oh, just yeah. is, I mean, you said it earlier. He's got this lazy eye and it just it, he feels lazy. Yeah. I think he was only cast for his height, so he, he would be taller than He was only than, cast because oh, he was really? tall. Oh, absolutely. He was. Wow. Cuz he's like a foot taller than Robert England. Yes. I was like, I just I just never connected with like him or Michael Myers cuz they don't talk. Oh, you like her Brandy likes charisma. Yeah, exactly. Oh. That's, why <laughs> That's why she likes Freddie. She likes she likes her child murderers to be, you know, charismatic. Yeah. yeah. Oh my. <laughs> like my slasher's like I like my men with funny personalities. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> I feel like there's some bleed over between those two, but that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> um, so question. Yeah. How long is Jason's fucking machete? Because like seven feet. It goes all the way through <laughs> that tree. <laughs> it, it shows the tree that's like two or three feet yeah. thick. He stabs her and a foot of the blade comes out. Like yeah. this motherfucker has like a machete spear. Mm -hmm. How? Oh, I mean, it, not to fast forward, but it goes to the cornfield on fire. I'm like, that's not how that works. Right, no, right. I'm not a scientist. <laughs> 
but that's not how that works. Oh, I don't care <laughs> about that. I don't care if it doesn't make sense. But it was kind of cool. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't care that it doesn't make sense. <laughs> no, no, that's that's badass. That's the single best kill in the movie. Yeah, I was like, I, I was kind of for that scene. I was like, this this doesn't make sense, right. but I'm here for it. Oh. All right, let's back, let's back up. Let's back up. Let's go back to the introduction of uh, our, our main cast of characters who are playing fuck mary kill about oh, yeah. the three stooges oh this is after this is after the opening titles that my girlfriend compared to uh shrek <laughs> when the <laughs> when the mud gets thrown on the wall <laughs> okay what i don't appreciate is this anti-black wig that they had on kelly Rowland. oof this. right oh my god it's such a bad wig <laughs> i was like why did y'all do my girl like this it's so bad i mean i was more concerned the conversation i immediately knew i'm like i hate everyone in this movie already yeah. right only three people so shown so far yeah i mean generally i was like these are dumb teenagers yeah so all their conversation is gonna be monotonous yeah, yeah. that's fair teenagers that look 30 that, that look 30 but, years old but yes they're doing what are they trying to relate who is this joke for about the three stooges this is not, like nobody above the age of like 15 or below the age of like 18 in the audience gives a shit about fucking the three stooges nobody cares mm. who gives a shit I, I am not playing this game with you guys fuck mary killed three stooges we're not gonna oh, do no, that i was for gonna the... ask <laughs> <laughs> i was definitely gonna ask okay fair enough because nathan nathan has his answers locked and loaded i guarantee it yeah i knew he did i don't even remember their names me neither to be honest i'm like i don't know three stooges like that enough to like decipher what about um well they 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 try to play fuck mary kill with fred scooby and shaggy look the correct answer is <laughs> no <I'm> kidding <laughs> i think it would have made more sense to like all right, fuck Mary Kill with the dudes from Friends or something. That makes more sense. <laughs> that would have made much more sense. You know the cast of Friends? Jen, give me your black car right now. <laughs> no, no, I don't, but they probably did. Hang on. This was 2003, so wouldn't it have been like the cast of Smallville or something? Yeah, like a whatever popular show at the time. Yeah. Not the Three Stooges. Like, I, yeah. That didn't make any sense to me. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, I don't even know the fucking Three Stooges. Right. What are they trying to do in this movie with Kelly Rowland and her, her nose job thing? Uh, oh my that... god, the fucking scene. <laughs> no. What a weird runner. What does it mean? It means nothing. I'm sorry, that was one of the funniest scenes to me with Freddie, like, where, where like, she oh, falls takes asleep. Her nose? Yeah. yeah, like, I got your nose. That shit was fun. See, that's why I'm like, that's why Freddie's funny to me. He has moments like that. Yeah, it was just a setup for that. But why do you have to do that to the black girl? Exactly. Like, yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. That, but also, like, he fucked with everybody. Yeah. One of my favorite tropes of the Nightmare movies is that there's always a scene at the beginning where everyone just kind of says what their character is. Like, mm -hmm. like especially in, like, four and five, like, one girl just goes, and four, she goes, like, ooh, I hate roaches. Just so yeah. we can <laughs> see her get turned into a roach later. That's or true. one person goes, mm, I have asthma, so that they can, like, have the, the air sucked out of them. Yeah. <laughs> so they turn it into personality traits. Pretty so much. Yeah, right. Basically. Please. right right exactly oh yeah why was that one girl like so hung up on that douchey guy oh you know i hate, I don't like to be touched after <laughs> yeah like that, oh god yeah like that whole scene i'm just like bitch is this your king right <laughs> <laughs> has there ever been a bigger asshole in movies than this dude immediately yeah he's like oh you smell like cigarettes Ugh, he tastes like fucking menthol he has three moments in a 10 minute scene where yeah. he just proves that he's the worst human being alive <laughs> wasn't he the one that was like in that sex scene he was like fuck me i was like oh my god oh, no thank you i'm good don't make me ask you twice <laughs> she's doing her best yeah and i'm like she's trying <laughs> she's doing her best i know she was a, like she was on top <laughs> like, he had no uh, appreciation for this hot girl and he deserved what he got right. why is she chasing this boy around Catherine isabel deserved better she's yeah exactly right she definitely deserves better <laughs> yeah. yeah she has one of my maybe i didn't realize how much i quoted this movie until watching it today uh, hell yeah but, <laughs> Catherine Isabel has a line, the I only smoke when I drink now. Well, you're always drinking. Yeah, well, I'll work on that next. That's good. <laughs> I quote that so fucking much without yeah. realizing it. Doesn't she call him a cocksmith? Oh yes. my God. I wrote that I down. That was that. so funny. I'm, I'm stealing that. Uh, That's mine now. This movie is kind of quotable at times. No, yeah. It's really good. Yeah, like cocksmith is a great insult. <laughs> We're just gonna we're gonna write that down. I, I have another question for the ladies. Oh no. This is another trope that I don't think a woman has ever really had any input on when it comes to the movie making process, but is I gotta ask, is the whole 
women loving a man with a great ass really a thing? Oh, yeah. Do look, do ladies like buns? No, for what? Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate a cute butt. No, I don't. That does nothing. I mean, it's not like anything that's going to influence like anything in the bedroom. But they always do. They always do this of like, oh, he's got such a great ass. I'm like, OK. And? Yeah, I like guys with cute asses. OK, but I also like the idea of pegging, too. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say Dustin wanted the scene to cut to Gib pegging her boyfriend. <laughs> yes. All I think is Broad City. I'm like, there you go, Brandy. That's for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If, if they would have done that, I, this would have been a 10 out of 10 yes. movie for yes. me. Yeah. It's a Shinjo. <laughs> but guys are boring and they're like weird about their sexuality, so they don't want to. So I think the pegging would have made up for all the female nudity in the past two decades. <laughs> it would have been yeah. very progressive. Dude, yes. If they would have cut to the sex scene between the two. <laughs> He's like, Gib, put this in the dishwasher. <laughs> <laughs> Shinjo. <laughs> it's a Shinjo. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry, okay, sorry, sorry, not to sidetrack, but yeah, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's. I just needed someone to finally answer that I'm question. I'm so glad for me. you asked. <laughs> no. Um, this party fucking sucks that they're at oh, the yeah. beginning, by the way. There's like four people there and two of them dip. <laughs> That's not a party. Wait, are you talking are you talking about the one in the cornfield? No, 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 no. We're not there yet. Oh, We're not okay. there yet. Random people showing up to your house and you're allowing them inside. I'm like, you could just leave. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, say, I don't know if that's a party. That's like that's 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 a casual hang, I think. I think they're trying <laughs> yeah. to make it a party though. This but- movie's shot with the gloss of like a pizza commercial. Like it looks like <laughs> when they're all standing in the kitchen and Kia's like make some conversation Lori you expect her to be like can you help me put the Totinos in the oven like <laughs> mom said we could have bagel bites <laughs> I mean I think it's just a reflection on how much these characters suck yeah, yeah I hate every single one of them they're the worst it was like like they're all like drinking and smoking and they're having terrible conversations like right. all of you have the personalities of cardboard one of the best parts of the movie that's unintentionally is hilarious is she makes that blake guy like she's like oh you want to make an impression why don't you go get us some drinks and he goes to the kitchen uh, not he can't possibly hit be out of the room yet and she looks to kelly rowley goes he's a total idiot and i'm like he's gotta be standing right there <laughs> yeah <laughs> but he also deserves to know yes yes he definitely does you need to understand uh, you are stupid uh, i i swear because i've only seen this movie once before and i swore i could have sworn that monica kina was britney murphy right like, for the longest I, who are these people the main girl Oh, she's the the final girl? I yeah. could see it. Yeah, I can see it. I could see it. Yeah, there were moments where like I was like getting like glimpses of Brittany Murphy and I was like, oh no. Yeah. Oh. I mean, this whole movie is filled with discount versions of other people. There's discount Jason Mewes, who's the stoner later on. Oh, There's wow. discount Miles Teller that's playing the nerd. <laughs> well, uh d- yeah, discount Jason Mewes is played by uh Kyle Levine, who's the brother of Tyler Levine from Tucker and Dale versus Evil. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Which I, I realized i was like oh i'd rather be watching that movie <laughs> yeah that sounds a lot better than my situation which i will say you better show chris marquette some respect that man that he's, he's not a bad actor actually oh linderman yeah dude. Yeah. yeah he's been in some stuff there's discount bobby moynihan that's in the jersey later on too <laughs> I, yes, I wrote that down i wrote that oh, down yeah, the yeah. did you fuck this bread <laughs> <laughs> did you fuck this bread god that would have been a great moment um Let's talk about the first kill genuinely of the movie because I don't count the the girl and Jason's. Oh, you don't count the dream one? Okay. Oh, yeah, the one running with her titties out. <laughs> yeah, I don't count that one. Probably not the massage he was expecting. Yeah, the bed death is great. It rules. Oh, it's so good. That chef's kiss, amazing. I like that it kind of was like going back to like one of the kills from the first Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and Friday the 13th, too, for with sure. that Kevin Bacon's death a little bit. Oh, yeah. It's brutal as hell, though. It's so funny at the same time. Yeah. yeah. The commitment to keeping the beer from spilling is impressive. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think that's alcoholism. <laughs> <laughs> I picture, like, Julia from Trailer Park Boys at this moment. Like, he's got to keep the drink right. the glass open at all But also, like, when that happened, I was like, damn, his back must feel amazing after. That looks like that like, feels good to you, Jake. Hurts. I'm like, damn, that looks like it feels good. Yeah. My back is constantly in pain. <laughs> like, Me too. That yeah. So good in that. Me too. But at a certain point, Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, you need a bed that'll put you into a V shape, I guess. <laughs> like Roger Rabbit just busting out of the height of bed. <laughs> and beds don't do this. That was very look, after 
I mean, judging from the rest of the kills in the movie, that's probably the most and only creative kill in that, in that entire movie. Yeah, pretty much. It's beds don't do that. <laughs> Look, accept it. Yeah, except for yeah, the only time I've ever seen beds do that is in movies. Like, is that a real thing? No, no. I have like if you get like spa- if you request like a spare bed at a hotel, yeah. there are those ones that fucking fold up and it's terrifying. Oh hell yeah, it's the most uncomfortable shit imaginable. Yeah. Oh sure, but I don't think they can crush a human body (laughs) well when that scene happened and no one here right what was going on i was gonna say why and how does jason not murder all these idiots in this house right where the fuck does he go (laughs) right and i'm like why did they all i just don't understand like why did they all go outside screaming oh yeah i I mean there is a great moment with the dipshit deputy oh yeah yeah. yeah. he's like are you okay that was hilarious (laughs) yeah because that was a dumb fucking question i would have said the exact same thing as her like what the fuck do you what think? the fuck like, do you think? That's so good. <laughs> she is a genuine scream queen. Like, I'm literally covered in blood screaming outside. The fuck does it look like? <laughs> we need to put more respect on her name. She's the best part of the movie. Oh, speaking of that cop, like, is that is that like his career like movie trope is like just playing dumb cops? Yes. Yep. Oh, I don't know his name, but yeah. Playing a dipshit cop? Because I remember him being in White Chicks and he oh. was a dumb cop in that too. Oh, oh yeah. that's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's He's got... A very, very special trick that he can do that we're going to talk about later on. But yeah, I think I agree. I don't like that. You're gonna. Uh, we can get into it now. Yeah, we can get into it now. Um, he's a fucking magician. If you guys didn't notice, because what? when all the kids are in the basement figuring out what they're gonna do for the plan, yeah, I don't go, know if you guys notice this. Uh, he materializes into this fucking. Basement <laughs> yes, he does. Mm-hmm. This is the stairs. Right here, I'm showing them the clip. Uh, right there is the stairs. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, this this '70s shows looking shot. Yes. Uh, where the fuck he comes out from here? Oh my yeah. god! <laughs> no, yeah. Where did he come from? Huh? I don't know. He had been waiting there for hours. I thought I did think that was weird. He's just been waiting. Around. He like he just popped up out of nowhere. This like creepy ass cop. Yeah. I hate this movie so much. <laughs> I I cackled so audibly loud when that happened. Um, let's talk about so so the the first kill happens with Trey. Yeah. And for some reason, only Lori gets taken to the police station. I don't know why. Right. They're like, fuck those other kids. Yeah. And then she falls asleep during a panic attack. Oh, yeah. During a really important moment in her life. Yes. In the police station. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. This movie's very, plays fast and loose with how and when people are falling asleep. Yeah. Dude, these, like, how you fall asleep at a cornfield rave? <laughs> like, walk, yeah, walking through a rave. Look, I've passed out in a lot of weird places. Yeah. They, they play fast and loose with a lot of things in this movie. Yeah. yeah. You guys never passed out in a party before? I mean. Not while walking. <laughs> I passed out at a party, not in a fucking cornfield. <laughs> Where is this town? Springfield, Ohio. Oh, really? Yeah, it's supposed to be in Ohio. Ohio. Yeah. Okay, so I'm like, how far is Elm Street from Crystal Lake? Eight hours. Oh, I know. <laughs> it's no, eight no, no. hours away. They, I looked it up. I looked it up conservatively because because uh, Crystal Lake is supposed to be in New Jersey. Yeah. Really? Conservatively, oh. if if you if you go on the border of Ohio and you just go <laughs> right, to the border right. of New Jersey, it takes six hours. Yeah. They acted like this was like a thirty minute drive. Yep. For, well, I was gonna say for me, the biggest logic leap in this whole movie is that they drive around in this ba- this van with this heavy metal vinyl wrap around it and do not get pulled over the whole time. Yeah. Right. This van screams probable cause. But I think the director just <laughs> did not look into that. No, no, not at all. No. <laughs> at all. No. That was the most unrealistic part to be honest. Like, there's no way they would not get pulled over immediately in this fucking right. van. <laughs> um, so let's talk about um, <laughs> one of the funniest parts of the movie to me is blake's death this is a uh, trey's best friend that swears vengeance i'm gonna take him out myself trey i'm gonna do it for you oh, buddy I was gonna say who oh my god like like who are you talking about yeah i don't know these people's names in the movie because he holds up his father's head <laughs> oh my god that his dad's head leaps off the body yeah <laughs> yeah so is it implied that jason cut the dad's head off put it, put back, it on. back on yep then waited for a dude to wake up like 
that's more of a Freddy move. Yeah. And somehow there's a geyser. Oh my God. There's a geyser of blood. That scene was such a testament to how bad the acting in this movie oh, is. Oh, that kid's terrible. But... I'm gonna take him out myself, Trey. Yeah. Oh, when he died, I was like, awesome. I don't have to look at him anymore. Yeah, and his dad was like, shut up. And he was like, my friend just died. His dad was Alex Jones, wasn't <laughs> it? I wrote that down. Blake's dad is Alex Jones. <laughs> that would have been so much of a better movie. Like, just, just imagine. He's like, look. Son, you'll be fine. Just go take a tactical bath. Oh my god. You'll be fine. He's like, they're making the frogs fucking gay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and drink this bone broth. Right. <laughs> Can I, did anyone else realize the very strange performance that goes on during this part? This is where, when Freddy realizes he's not strong enough. Don't make me watch the, don't make me watch this again. I'm like, oh, this kid all of a sudden just like, he loves his dad now. He's dead. He, well, no, it's after that. This this crazy shit happens to him. He sees a goat. Yeah, which is a reference to the first movie, the only one the director has seen. Oh, yeah. He sees Freddy. But watch. What, this is what happens to him. And look, watch his reaction. Listen. Okay. I'm okay. Uh, I'm, okay. I'm okay. Yeah, he's like, I'm fine. Oh, I'm fine. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> How are you not pissing your pants? I would shit my pants right. twice. <laughs> I was like, is this, is this kid literally too dumb to be scared? <laughs> I think that's what they're going for. Well, also, I don't think he's dumb. I think he's an alcoholic. Like, I think they're everyone is just drunk in this movie nonstop. Too drunk. His dad's a moron for not smelling the alcohol on him. Right. He pulls a flask out multiple times. I mean, he probably got it from his dad. <laughs> his dad's head falls off into his arms. Right. Jason is behind him. No, his dad's head leaps off. <laughs> right. And then when Jason goes to stab him, he holds up his dad's head to yes. block the machine. Yes. I mean, you guys don't hate your parents enough to use their head. <laughs> oh, so funny. She makes a good point. I know, right before he died, him and his dad were like cussing each other out. Yeah, it's fine. Here's the thing, though. Is it just me or is this movie, even for a slasher film, have excessive blood? Yes. Like, there, when he slashes Blake and the, the blood spatters across the wall, it's yeah. so much fucking blood. There's a couple of moments in this where there are, like, Kill Bill style, yes. like, blood <laughs> sprays. Spray. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. But they're also CGI blood, and oh, I'm like, yeah. no one likes that. Right. Everyone hates it. Yeah. It's always a bummer when it's CGI blood. Oh, when they get to the cornfield, everyone turns into a broken fire hydrant with the yeah. blood spewing out of their body <laughs> but what if that was real I mean, <laughs> um there's a, a really tasteless columbine reference oh, way yeah. too soon in this movie really yeah she love me a good columbine reference and kelly kelly rollins the one who says it yeah. they said it's some kind of columbine thing he killed oh, his dad and then him, i guess he stabbed himself i, don't I forgot know. about that yeah. yeah yeah but it's nothing like columbine that was pretty soon that was only two years later which hang on real quick right before that though like there's the scene between her um like between her and her dad in the house oh yeah they 100 percent would not be allowed to live in a house that's an active crime scene yeah right yeah no, that's very true oh no they gotta go <laughs> they would not be able to be there yeah but can you like sleep in your house after that i know you're like how are you still living in the house and her mom too that's when we get that moment where <laughs> like the the cop is like well it's got to be freddy krueger and gary chalk as the sheriff is just like you shut your fucking mouth <laughs> like, we're gonna cover this up <laughs> like <laughs> He he was the best part of the movie. And then, a few minutes later, he gives someone shit. He's like, "We don't say that name out loud." It's like you just said it ten minutes ago. I know. Yeah, Voldemort. <laughs> yeah, I was like, "What is this Voldemort horse shit?" Wait, why is he acting like this is Bloody Mary? I okay. So this is this is one idea that I really like that is not explored to a a, a satisfying degree. Like I enjoy the idea that. This city is just literally trying to force Freddy to not exist anymore. <laughs> yep. Um, but it's it's not it's done in the most obvious and dumb ways. Yeah. Oh, I, I wrote down like, well, two things. First of all, I'm just now realizing how much this movie is inspired by Harry Potter because oh. you get that the he who will not be named, Voldemort, and then when yeah. Lori falls asleep, you get the the missing kid photos that come alive and like follow her like the oh, yeah. <laughs> shit that was cool though yeah that's definitely a Harry Potter thing yeah and at the end of the movie Jason Ritter pulls a sword out of a hat and yeah, stabs him it was wild mm -hmm. oh. mm -hmm. and he gets he gets sorted into Slytherin yeah oh, that's right <laughs> love it so right there at the school right after the Columbine reference 
the fact that the first thing she describes about Freddy is his fucking hat. hat? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I noticed that is too. Is bonkers to me. It's like not his burned skin, not the sweater, not the clawed hand. <laughs> the he hat. had a brown hat. He's got really weird fashion sense. <laughs> <laughs> he had a fucking fedora. Did you guys catch Evangeline Lilly in that scene? I Wait, did. she's in the movie? Yeah, Evangeline Lilly. Yeah. She's uh, like an extra. She's the student standing behind Lori looking grossed out by the Freddy story. Yeah. yeah. Wow, she come, she's come a long way. Now she's uh, the, the wasp. wasp. Yeah. Good for her. Yeah. <laughs> Is that supposed? To, I don't know if that was supposed to be like. A, I don't know if that was supposed to be like a compliment. <laughs> but why does she talk like she was whispering in this movie? Yeah, no. All of Lori's scenes, she, she, every scene she says, every line is sort of like this. Are you crying? It doesn't matter how dire the situation is. Yeah, she had this like weird, like wispy voice, and yeah. I'm like, bitch, like I can't turn the volume up enough. Like I can't hear you. There's one line where she goes. She says something like, "We have, we have to hurry." Yep. Is she asleep or crying? Right. Like, she sounds like she just got done crying. <laughs> it sounds like she is. Right. The fucking audacity of these filmmakers to name this character Lori. Oh, I know. Clearly a nod to Halloween. Fucked up. Is just infuriating. Yeah. But oh, God. No, I mean, she... Her, the poor actress. She has the worst dialogue. She's she even come out and said that she only did this movie for the money. That's, yeah. That's fair. Yeah, get that check, boo. Right. When they're in that basement scene... She has maybe the worst line of dialogue I've ever heard in oh, a movie. The Freddy. You go ahead, Nathan. I know okay. it. You know it. I've got it written down. <laughs> I know you know Freddy it. Freddy died by fire, Jason by water. How can we use that? Oh yeah. She says it. She says it to no one. Out of nowhere. Everyone has their backs to her. No, I was like, is this bitch trying to like go into a Pokemon gym or something? <laughs> <laughs> She's like preparing the elements in her. We need a ground killer. <laughs> okay, so we, we send a Vaporeon after Jason. We need a grass type. We need a fighting type. The end of the movie is her using one of the big worms from Tremors to defeat them both. Ooh, I'm into that. That would have been a way better ending, honestly. That would have been fucking rad, honestly. I love oh, that. Hell yeah. Oh, but to, to, to piggyback off your point, Nathan, about like this town trying to for make it forget that Freddy exists. Yeah. It, this is something the movie doesn't ever touch on. But this movie posits a world mm -hmm. that both these infamous supernatural monsters exist yeah. simultaneously. Right. Jason in New Jersey, Freddy in Ohio. And in neither franchises before this film have they acknowledged that insanely important detail. <laughs> right. Like, you would not... This would be worldwide news, like that both these entities exist. You can't cover this up. They kind of touch on it. They kind of touch on it in Jason Goes to Hell, where they have like an inside edition style, uh, like yes. documentary yeah. about all of his kills, which I love. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah oh it's, my God. It, it's like a TMZ of serial killers. Yes. But like. There's no way these kids wouldn't know who Jason is. Right. It's in, the whole movie, they're like, who is that guy? Right. I'm like, there's no fucking way. And none of these dildos, whenever they go to the library, <laughs> search hockey mask killer. Yeah. Oh like, my God. The first thing I would Google. Yeah, it takes Lachlan Moreau Monroe coming in to say, like, his name's Jason Voorhees. He's killed 95 people. Or none whatever. of you like, turds have heard of him. <laughs> yeah, they were making it seem like it was this very, like, local thing that, like, yeah. people outside of the area don't know. But it's like, if they kill that many people like right shouldn't it go beyond at some point right. it's national news bro like, <laughs> well yeah like 20 of his murders were in new york yeah, oh, yeah manhattan. Oh, yeah. he took manhattan <laughs> i mean i just come to the conclusion that everyone in this movie is a dumbass oh, yes. there's really nothing yeah. i can do about it it is a bunch of dumb teenagers honestly yeah. every single person yeah quote unquote teenagers yeah no like 30 year old <laughs> teenagers well a bunch of 30 year olds playing teenagers <laughs> uh, i want to say too um like speaking of everyone's a dumbass it's insane how short-sighted everyone in this movie is because like the guy gets killed at the beginning trey or whatever and then blake gets killed and then they're all like we're gonna have a party out in the middle of nowhere right. no. yeah. there's don't do there's that. no parents to be found in this Cornfield movie rave. <laughs> unce, 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 yeah he even unce, says that unce, when unce. he was dead he was like bitch you're partying like right after i died and like well all your friends are yeah. <laughs> i mean i'll be pretty pissed too but they're 
like no sensible parent would let their kid go out after yeah. three murders have just happened two of which are teenagers right and in this town parents in these movies are always seem terrible but yes. you think like the parents are like i've had enough this is a town that's known for this shit but the parents are like i've had enough of these kids let them go <laughs> oh yeah and at that point it's like everybody knows there's a killer on the loose so it's like yeah no. let's just let our kids go party outside right. no the parents hate their kids yeah let them go to the slow-mo cornfield rave <laughs> oh so it's like um it's like a reverse children to men instead of yeah. they can't have kids they're trying to get rid of them so they're like yeah right. go, go out in the cornfield right <laughs> yeah, like, i don't like my kid let them go which is the which is the plot of freddy's dead yes <laughs> oh shit i mean looking at all their personalities do do we really blame them? yeah we don't want the generation to breed no not at all their parents are probably like gonna hate this child <laughs> like like the first character that almost made me get on their side immediately torpedoed their chances. And it's when like he is being super mean to Linderman. Ooh, and he like, yeah, my boy Linderman. And then he <laughs> just shuts her the fuck down. Okay. This was, this was one of the things that like kind of was grating to me about this movie is like, why did they make the meanest girl in this movie? The black girl. Yeah. Right. right. And then he, but he starts to, he like nails this comeback where he's like, I think you're mean to me because you don't like yourself. And then he has this fucking incel comment about her makeup yeah. where I'm just like, well, you just undid everything you said. And then they like harped on her insecurity with her being like, oh, like you want to dance? So it's like, oh, like now she's chasing him yeah. to get validation from him. Yeah. Cause he, cause he knows her. Yeah. <laughs> hey man, y'all leave my boy Linderman alone. But no, right? no, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. He was defending himself. Wait, 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 wait. We got to talk about that real quick because this movie tries to make him out to be a good person, and then yeah. you're right, Nathan. He does have that incel comment, but yeah. even more so than that, he is a sexist and a pervert because the whole time he's trying to like he even tells kelly Rowland's character that he's trying to get with Lori, and she's yeah. standing right the fuck there she, he's not even <laughs> saying it to her that he likes her yeah i thought i always thought you didn't like me because i love Lori. yeah and that makes him even more of a creep it's like oh you're trying to go for the virgin yeah you fucking weirdo well, no, it's, it's he's like like that he deserves a chance with her he's like you yeah. you don't think i'm good enough for her it's like well, yeah. maybe you should talk to her about that like maybe you're not you ever thought about that he also has that line later in the basement uh when he's like oh, i'm not a virgin it still counts even if you paid for it it's like oh, oh my god no. oh, oh. insane insane that? line why not he's supporting sex work <laughs> why that is true i love no no i loved it i was like hell yeah we're in a life or death situation he, he is a feminist in that aspect but it's done as a joke which is so strange <laughs> it's just a, it's the wrong time to have a weird joke yeah, yeah. yeah. i don't know so Wait, but who funded this cornfield party? Because they have like a full DJ set. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Beer? They have kegs. They have everything. Yeah. Like, who's paying for this? Oh, yeah. Were any of you watching like the kids in the background in these scenes? I'm like, no, none thank of these kids you. can fucking dance. None <laughs> of them. Like, no thanks. Yeah. <laughs> They're in a. No one can dance in Ohio. That's just a fact. I was like, none of you are on beat. I was like, <laughs> I get you're all white kids, but Jesus Christ. <laughs> I will say, yeah, this movie is not surprisingly lacking in any other ethnicity yeah <laughs> kelly Rowland's like the only person of character yeah kelly was the one girl she's the one black girl in ohio right and i love kelly like kelly is a lot of things but and I, she's a lot of great things but actress not one of them sure at all <laughs> nope i will say too um because now we're at the rave scene we loved <laughs> two <laughs> things <laughs> in the early 2000s yeah shooting scenes at 12 frames per second oh uh, my and raves we yeah, fucking we did. loved raves did in the early 2000s we sure the, did the matrix blade triple x they, they're raves this in, looked like the rave scene in reloaded yes we fucking loved raves back then <laughs> um so we get to gibbs death yes yeah so okay. the, my my girlfriend said, brought this up where she was like there's this great runner in the friday the 13th movies where she's like whether he knows it or not jason's kind of a feminist like he, <laughs> yeah. loves, he loves to kill guys who have just been disrespectful to women yeah, yeah, it's true. yeah but he but he also kills her in that same he also breath, kills her so yes. is he really a feminist but for the time i feel like she was collateral maybe he's just for like equal rights yeah but at the time he was pretty progressive you're like girl and god like i will keep you both equally uh, <laughs> right. okay okay interesting take that's progressive for that time 2003 right interesting take 100 a lot of things can be 
considered progressive. <laughs> I just think he has bad death perception because he only has one eye. And he was oh, just trying no, to kill the glow sense. stick guy, but he accidentally killed her too. So, I'm like, uh oh. I love that he just poaches that kill right out from under <laughs> Frederick. So it's so yeah. funny. And I love how it, it got Freddy heated. He yeah. was like, oh, that one was mine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you son of a bitch. The, the shot of Freddy. Uh, Freddy's like hanging upside down with his legs crossed is like a really cool visual. I like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's very Pennywise esque from the from the It movie. And then and then the the rave guys come up like when Jason comes walking out. One of them goes, "Check out this fucking guy, <laughs> dude! This Everclear is kicking my ass." Yes, it's like <laughs> I immediately thought of you, Dustin. Oh right, dude, he's drinking Everclear out of a gallon. Yeah. He's, he's like, got a picture of Everclear clear this man came to fucking party <laughs> a gallon of pcp and like how is this kid still walking he's gonna die yeah he doesn't he doesn't need jason yeah he doesn't need jason to kill him he could fucking just he'll, he'll liver damage will catch up to him <laughs> right. one way or the other that motherfucker's gonna be dead in an hour i have yeah that's true i have i have three notes before we get to his death that i think are worth addressing one uh-huh they pull off a f- how dare they fucking do this they do a hitchcock zoom yeah on yep. gib when she sees freddie for the first time and i was offended by that yep. yeah secondly do you think the prop guy for this movie oh. was like, hey, do you think we get even more glow sticks on this guy? That's <laughs> <working this girl?" laughs> This dude lit up like a lighthouse. Yep. What the fuck? Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Motherfucker looked like a Christmas tree. Yeah. I, I gotta say, the, the shot when Freddy first steps out is great. Oh, yeah, fantastic. I, there's something to be said for Robert England is a fucking star. Yeah. He knows he knows this character so well. He knows exactly how to position himself on camera. Mm-hmm. There's so many great shots where he just kind of slowly unfurls his claws right. or tips his hat in a fun way. Like he is owning the screen every time he's on it. Absolutely. That's part of what I like about Freddy too is I appreciate Robert England. Agreed. Like, how can you not? He has good screen presence. Yes. Yeah. And it's so funny. If you ever listen to interviews with him, he gets so deep into his craft yeah. and he is like a film nerd. Like, right. there's oh, yeah. like if you listen to interviews with him, he's like, so it was uh, me and Franco Zeffirelli at a <laughs> like at a posh diner. And like <laughs> his his stories are insane. I love him to death. And I like how he's always hyped to like be at the horror conventions. Oh, yeah. Yes. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, but my only other note before we get to the, the actual fun part of this movie, which is the cornfield killings, is we haven't <laughs> yeah. talked about it that much, but Jason Ritter. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Um, two things about Jason Ritter. One, has the most punchable face I think I've ever seen. What? for That's John yeah. Ritter's face. What are you oh, talking I'm aware. about? I love John Ritter. His son, not so much. Um, <laughs> Jason Ritter has that thing that Taylor Lautner has in the Twilight movies where he always looks like he's just smelled a fart, but isn't <laughs> sure if he should say something. I was going to say something similar, Nathan. I was going to say, oh I think he's I think he's got something in his contract that says he's not allowed to close his mouth. Dude, oh, he's all. a mouth breather. Yeah. Type. Oh, yeah. He is, his tooth to gum ratio is out of control. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I was, uh, I was lost on the fact that, like, okay, there's that, that scene of him being in the mill institution with that other kid that, like, got his whose brother got killed that other kid's a great actor too yeah. in this oh, he's movie so good brendan fletcher is actually very good in this yeah but then i'm like why does it go from that to like them in school the next day oh hey brandy it doesn't matter yeah. <laughs> damn yeah no they they break out they break out of the asylum and then just go to mark's house where his family isn't <laughs> and then they show up to school i'm like yeah how are you just like in school like you weren't just in the middle institution yesterday just like okay i mean there's a lot of stuff like this after the rave massacre everyone just decides to go home yeah. <laughs> i just i just kept asking where are the teachers in this school because all these kids are just out in the hall right like after like what how many kids died <laughs> right yeah. uh well let's let's get to the the, the jethro part of the movie where this, they dump Everclear on on Jason. Yeah. Okay. And this guy out of nowhere, where does he get this torch? Because he, I, did he? Okay. Be- yeah. <laughs> when they dumped it on them, I was thinking like, oh, why would you fucking dump alcohol on somebody on fire? And then the fire goes out. I was uh, like, what? <laughs> I hate everyone. Right. But before before that, he, he he before Jason he was on fire. The guy throws the Everclear on him. It cuts to Jason reacting. And then it cuts back and he just has a torch in his fucking head. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> 
Uh, but anyways, this is the most badass part of this movie is fuck science, I guess. <laughs> oh, the shot of Jason on fire walking through the cornfield is great. It's, it's a great. Scene. Oh, it's fucking great. No, amazing, but also physics, science doesn't exist. Yeah, fuck science. No. Yeah, I don't care. Don't care. At that right. point, I don't so care. care. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jason kills so many people at this party. There's so many people who stand there and wait for him to do right. it. There's one guy who throws his arms wide so Jason can slash him. Yeah. Like, you know there's someone just like, oh shit, it's almost my turn. Oh god, I'm so nervous. Like, oh, here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. Yeah, they're just like, me next, me next. Yeah, I, I, I won this role in a contest. <laughs> they're just like, get me the fuck out of Ohio. This is it. Let's go. Wow, man, they're still... You probably have this one in Ohio. That's fine. It's, Even so, <laughs> fuck them. It's, it's, it's genuinely, I mean this genuinely, it's an unbelievable amount of people that get killed by Jason here because, yeah. as you said, there's one guy in particular who stands there and watches Jason with his back to camera yeah. and is just kind of like trying to like bob and weave, but he stays in the same pocket the whole time yep. and Jason just murders yeah. him. It's like that scene in in Freddy's Revenge where Freddy just wrecks the pool party, mm -hmm. <laughs> but like, mm -hmm. but like the kids are even less defensive. There, there's one guy that somehow gets killed by a magic machete <laughs> because Jason goes to hit him, it hits the keg, yeah, and then when it cuts back, he's bleeding. I saw <laughs> yeah, that. The blood still squirts out. I'm like, I saw that. Yeah, I'm yeah. not an idiot. <laughs> I'm not stupid. There's one guy you can actually see like a square underneath his oh, hoodie. Yeah. Like the yeah. squib is so obvious. It's oh, wild. Yeah. I mean, this isn't my bit, my true, my choice for a bit part, but I would like to have been that guy. Yeah. That almost gets hit and it gets, and then <laughs> he has to pretend like he got hit and the blood squib sure. just goes off. <laughs> the director was not doing any more takes after that. So no. no, 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 no. Yeah, he's like, I want to eat. Let's go. Yeah. There's also a weird subplot in this movie that really comes to nothing but it's did Lori's dad kill his wife so the implication is that so like in the earlier in the nightmare movies you usually see someone getting killed but there's not a person there yeah. like they're right. getting killed in their dreams and so i guess the implication is that fred like her dad came up with a knife to stop the intruder and then pulled back the blanket and just saw her getting slashed up yes. and that's what will saw I think so and that's why he went to a mental institution what dad sent him because his her dad was covering up that freddie exists i got lost with this too because like she was seeing it and she was like oh freddie did it and i was yeah. like wait did he or is this just like one of those nightmare things where he's fucking with you i genuinely don't know i can tell you this i can only follow it because i've seen this movie a few times Maybe. like it is not <laughs> it is not made clear yeah, yeah. also does it matter because her dad does act, her dad does act really guilty though yeah it's, it's like a red herring but yeah, yeah that's why i'm like wait so if freddie killed then why does her dad act like that yeah <laughs> her dad is just like that he might just be a weird guy but also like will the way Will communicates this is he goes... <laughs> he chased her out of a window. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Will goes, I saw your dad kill your mom. <laughs> <laughs> he giggles about like, it. Like, he, like, giggles. Like, it's weird. It's this, the most insane delivery I've ever heard. I also found, I mean, this is not out of the realm of this genre, but I found the character of Lori to, Lori to be incredibly dumb. Yes. Oh, because yeah. She's how old and she's just now... Yeah, all, all the characters in this movie she's just now asking to see her mom's death certificate she's she also starts like that when she gets out of the car and starts screaming at her dad in the rain mm -hmm. my girlfriend said this feels like a uh, like a rupaul's drag race acting challenge <laughs> <laughs> like this is yes! <laughs> so accurate oh <laughs> like if you if you replaced Lori with alaska thunderfuck it would be the best thing in the world <laughs> honestly that's how this movie plays out yeah oh my god let's remake it hey i would i would much rather watch that honestly <laughs> oh yeah can we do a GoFundMe? as someone who's a fan of drag race I'm me here too for that. absolutely do a GoFundMe to have alaska <laughs> thunderfuck <laughs> as Lori. she'd be like dad no hi did anyone else notice how fucking intense the lightning is inside the house <laughs> the, the, the lightning in this movie it's it's storming every five seconds Dude, yes <laughs> like this it should be called people versus ominous weather because that lightning <laughs> is fucking more intense inside than it is outside absolutely like that house is made of fucking windows oh, i was just gonna say real quick going back to the cornfield scene yeah. sure. like when what yeah when freddie is killing that girl sure why does she go in that locker to hide. Yeah. I'm like, why would you hide somewhere where you can't run away? Randy, where are you going to go? 
Where are you going to go? Well, anywhere but fucking locker, somewhere where you can run away, not somewhere where you're trapped. And it's like, as soon as he finds you, then it's like, oh, well, I'm dead. She hides for 2.5 seconds. <laughs> it's like, of all places to run away. Yeah, she does. But when she falls off that railing. Yeah, how does she not break her neck? Dude, it's it's so unintentionally <laughs> hilarious. Right. I was like, how did that fall not kill her? Yeah. She slams into those lockers. <laughs> like, I, the first time I saw this movie, I thought she died right there. I was like, <laughs> Fuck, all right. I would have thought she did. Yeah. I want to talk about one of my, my favorite characters in this movie is is Mark, who is the other guy that's with Jason Ritter. Is Mark the only rational person in this movie? Uh, he's really yes. good. Yeah. And his brother is Scut Farkas. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking Farkas from A Christmas Story. Wait, is that the one who's, whose brother got killed by Freddy? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. I did like him. But that's such a good scene. Oh, that, that hold up. It, his bathroom is massive. It is. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I was like, how far away is that tub? Like, dude, his bathroom is bigger than my apartment. Yeah, when you have to take a stop halfway through walking through your bathroom before you get to the sink to take a breath, you got a big <laughs> ass bathroom. So, you think he's officially made it? I think he's made it. <laughs> Not bad for a crazy person. I do think, though, his death is the best, is one of the best in the movie. I mean, you don't really see him die, but, like, the slash to the face yeah. is so good. And when he gets his back burned. Uh, yeah, but they're, like, watching him as he's getting killed outside the window, and I'm like, so you're just you're just not going to do anything? You're just watching him <laughs> get slashed hey, up? Hey, Brandy, they're stupid. They're <laughs> stupid people. Quick question. Sure, sure, Mally. How, because... Uh, someone explain the rules to me because he's clearly awake when he dies because he says help me to them I, yeah yeah that, this movie plays fast and loose with that shit man. I know. Yeah. No, those are all, that's always the thing that has always bothered me about all the nightmare movies is that some of the scenes yeah when they catch him killing somebody in their sleep sometimes they're like screaming out and they look awake and then yeah it's very strange i'm just like wait so are they are they awake or not exactly <laughs> that is one thing that the the reboot does fairly well is like the whole yeah, idea of the like, micro naps yeah you can be what you think is awake but your body your brain is just shut down and so you're hallucinating and yeah. you're actually asleep like it's it's kind of interesting in that reboot in this movie yeah. yeah there's no logic to it it is weird that like the during mark's nightmare mm -hmm. freddie explains the plot to him he before does, killing yeah. him so that no one else gets the story yeah, he does uh, that was for us yeah. his death is very reminiscent of like the earlier nightmare i agree uh, because he's got like the the whatever they are like the rods that are sticking to his feet in the floor oh, and stuff yes yeah. it's great it's a great death yeah Brutal. and then ending with the the charred flesh <laughs> with the message and a pun yes uh, you know freddy's back uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good it's a good it's a good kill for sure yeah i i think um god damn it it's no shocker here but it's 2003 it's a slasher movie and everything is terrible so we had to put the lead actress in a low cut white shirt uh, and put her in the rain right but i will say the the restraint to not have her like like kind of like how they do jessica bill in that texas chainsaw remake where she's yeah it's basically a non-existent shirt it is impressive that this movie i mean good for her right and good for Catherine isabel to not do any nude scenes because yeah yeah i mean whew. the director fought so hard yes oh yeah titties in that movie yep. yeah he did. He yep. yep i mean he got he got what two yeah like was it fucking worth it yeah it's, especially for this movie Ugh. we cut from here to the scene where it becomes clear that the characters have a copy of the script <laughs> yeah how the fuck does will figure out freddy's plan yeah will's <laughs> like i think maybe he's using jason to make us scared of him again so we need to get the hypnosil uh, in order to like remove which by the way great great continuity link i had no idea what was happening in the hypnosil place oh that's could not put it together that's from dream warriors <laughs> that's mm -hmm. the that's the same asylum from dream warriors oh, no no i knew that but when oh. they actually go there i'm like i have no idea what they're doing oh like, what, okay what 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 their plan is here. i think i just stopped caring yeah and <laughs> wrote it out by then that's true that's probably what happened it's like i'm just here for the vibes now yeah it doesn't quite make any sense because if like why i guess that originally they were gonna go get the drugs so that they won't dream but then their plan completely shifts when friedberg swallows a <laughs> evil caterpillar oh my and god oh brandy can i talk about that caterpillar you want to talk about oh god about the so fucking much? worm no like in my notes i'm just like what is the reason yeah what the reason? with some public go domain guitar uh, in the background and uh, he pulls a bong out of nowhere right, that was yeah. awesome. <laughs> what is this for how 
why do you have to be the smoke with that thing? Right. Why are you not screaming at the top of your lungs? Right. At this, whatever this is. That he's supposed to be a Jason Mew stand in. That's why. I know. Uh, he's just like vibing with it now. Like, all right, I'm smoking with this worm now. Watching it crawl into its mouth was the worst oh. CGI. Yes. Right. Oh, so so bad. bad. Holy bad CGI, Batman. Yeah, this is the season of things going in people's throats. It looked like some James and the Giant Peach animation. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yes. Oh, so bad. Is it? Uh, okay, guys, I, I have to know. Is the line that goalie was pissed off funny or not? I eh. think it's hilarious. Yes, I laughed at it. I laughed that at it. That fucking goalie was pissed off about something? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I got a question, though. Um, well, not even so much a question, just an observation that I want to hear your guys' thoughts on. Sure. I think the stoner character is the least consistent somehow out of all the characters. Yes. Because yeah, I agree. The whole movie up to that point, he's like, dude, fuck Freddy. That shit's not real. We got to worry about this hockey dude. Yeah. And then when they're trying to talk to the, the deputy in that basement, he's like, "How?" Is, someone says, how is that possible that he's killing you in their dreams? And he looks to him and goes, anything is possible. God, you just don't get it. Yeah. Uh. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> so when he died, I was like, great. <laughs> I guess they're like, he's a stoner kid. He doesn't have to make sense. Whatever. We'll play, right. We'll give him any lines. <laughs> oh, dude, when, he, when Freddy possesses him, that was pretty funny. <laughs> no, yeah. I was going to say, I liked him more when Freddy possessed him. Yeah. So he was like, let me handle this bitch. <laughs> he starts pouring the drugs down the drain. <laughs> can we just, can we just retire that stoner stereo? Type sure. like it's played out. Yes, unless Jason Mewes is doing it. I mean, everyone smokes, so yeah. At this point, everyone no, smokes. I mean, this this movie it it dealt out all the stereotypes. Yeah, yeah. who's really a stoner anymore? Right. You know? This is a very early two thousands trope, though. This, right. The stoner in the horror movie. So in that in that asylum sequence, in that whole sequence, did anyone knows else notice that? No one can finish their trip up or down the stairs. Yes, right. I did notice that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know the, the logistics or the mapping of this building because it's kind of just everywhere. It happens two or three times where a group of people will be on the stairs and they're like, oh shit, something else, and just go back the yes, way they came. I noticed that too. twice in a row. <laughs> I noticed that too. Uh, Dustin, you'll appreciate this. My note for this scene is uh, let me get that pill. <laughs> Oh my. Hey, that actually sounds pretty tight, actually. I want that pill. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty great. I did want to go back real quick. Oh, sure, There's sure. something I want to talk about. I do think it's genuinely when they're in the basement and they're trying to figure out what they're going to do. And they're like, oh, maybe we should give a sacrifice to them. Yes. And then there's kind of that 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 fake out of they're like oh let's let's just sacrifice Lori oh yeah I thought that was genuinely great They'd start tying her oh, up oh I was really hoping that was I thought it was gonna happen I'm like yeah let's do it what the fuck Jen <laughs> I hate everyone in this movie Jen's like yeah yeah throw this virgin gold to, to the wolves like what <laughs> let her die <laughs> they jump to virgin sacrifice just fucking immediately immediately no that's fine. <laughs> Let's wrap this up. I was just dying at the fact that, like, when she brought his ear back, like, that dude started stomping it out. I'm like, well, it's a dead ear. What are you doing? <laughs> it turned into maggots. It's worms. <laughs> it's worms. I, I, I feel so bad for Monica Kina, though, because A, Ronnie Yu is a piece of shit. Yeah. B, this movie's terrible. And then C, <laughs> she has to get tongue raped by this old dude playing her oh, dad yeah yeah that was too much and then robert england kind of does the same thing too and i'm like fucking barf too much yeah also something that i didn't realize until watching it now and now it's even more relevant he kind of quotes an r kelly song when he does that to oh, her oh shit yeah. i missed that what does he say he says like you like you're telling me no but oh, like my right. mouth is saying yes oh, yeah. oh, no. so motherfucker dropped it R. Kelly lyric. Oh my god. Do you think the director is like on some type of watch list? Dude, uh, yes. Oh, <laughs> god damn it. Yeah, oh my god. Oh. <laughs> yeah, the early 2000s, like, there was there was so many, like, R. Kelly jokes in the media that it's just like, going back in time, it's just like, all the adults in this era need to be locked up. Yeah, this is when Chappelle's show was on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Whoever made this movie needs to be put on a watch list. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Right. Yeah, because this was like one of those moments where they're like, are you, like, okay, Okay, so you're making Freddy a pedophile. Okay. I mean, my yeah. body's telling me yes. Uh, Freddy and Friedberg's body injects uh, Jason with, yeah, with that uh, good, good. a tranquilizer. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I guess drugs circulate in this zombie. <laughs> like, who doesn't have, like, a circulatory system oh, that, that works. One of my notes I, I wanted to ask. Jason bleeds a lot in this movie. 
So theoretically, he has a finite amount. So he sure does. What happens when he runs out of blood? <laughs> does anything happen? <laughs> Great question. I, just, I mean, he's not even supposed to have blood. He's supposed to be dead. Do he get stabbed in the eyes later on and then can still walk around and see? Let's let's get into the physics of it. Right. Oh, no, let's not. <laughs> Maybe we can get to the bottom of like, <laughs> like how do how do vampires fuck? Like if they can't. <laughs> oh, wait, I watched Twilight and no thank you. I'm not gonna find that. Yeah, out. I watched I watched all of Buffy and Angel and I still can't figure it out. <laughs> Just accept it. Oh yeah, because I did I did see a tweet not too long ago that was like, how do vampires get hard? Where yeah. does their blood flow go? Yeah, I saw a tweet that said that uh, uh, Edward likes to take. Uh, Bella's tampons. Shut up, shut and, up. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, I anyway. know. Yeah, 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 yeah. The one yeah, I saw yeah, was yeah, a yeah. diva cup and he does this in a shot. I'm like, I hate that. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. I've had enough. Let's address the big elephant in the room, which is it takes over an hour for this movie to properly Freddy versus Jason. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And can we talk about how Frederick becomes a fucking, like, force-wielding Jedi in that goddamn fight sequence? I think this scene's really fun. He does a dick thrust yes. yeah. to propel Jason into yes. a pinball. Ball. Yes, shit, I love that. Pinball noises. I'm like, what? Yeah, that? no, that was that shit was hilarious. The pinball, the pinball joke is fucking great. It's funny, but man, it does not need to be in the movie. <laughs> I wholeheartedly disagree. I just didn't understand how he he suddenly just had these like telekinetic powers. Well, they're, I mean, that they're in Freddy's world, but it's just so like this is the point of this. The, the problem with this movie is there's no stakes to anything because you know neither of these two can die and then when we get the ending which we'll talk about it just shows that the studio is too much of a bitch to make a move mm. and make one of them a winner like well the director wanted to make three endings yeah Ugh, like fucking clue yeah exactly yeah, no he literally wanted to exactly like that um i think the studio said no good call oh i've yeah i've got some stuff on alternate endings too for, that we can go over for sure. I want to. I want to talk about real quick the the flashback that they had. They the weird thing where Freddy finger oh, yeah. bangs J little Jason's that head. Temple? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So Jason's little mind pal. Jason's little mind palace when he's walking to the cabin and in the lightning that is the best production design in the movie <laughs> yeah. like when he goes into the house and it's like all tattered up and everything I think that looks really cool and then it gets ex immediately stupid did you guys notice that <laughs> on Jason's bed uh, in his shack he has a ukulele <laughs> Why not? I thought it was fantastic oh, no. that that was a prop. Jason's like, I have feelings that need to be expressed too. And okay? I can only do it through song. I mean, he's not always killing. <laughs> no, no, no. Look, look, this is one thing that I don't understand about Jason's story too. Like, okay, so he got killed when he's 11. Oh yeah, no, Jason's story doesn't make sense. Like, how is... How is he? How is he growing as he's dead? Great like, question. Zombie this whole time. Zom zombie puberty. <laughs> Done. Well, that's the problem. This movie changes his backstory a, a little bit. bit. But yeah, we get this. I mean, th when they have like the little baby Jason like sh whimpering on the floor, it's trying to make me empathetic for a character that I've known has killed like a hundred people. Yes, <laughs> ninety-five. Doesn't Jason's mom like have more? Isn't there like more trauma with his mom and his backstory too? Like that's what I remember from the Friday movies. He watches her die. Yeah, the first Friday movie is is the mom killing counselors right. because mm -hmm. she blames the camp for letting her son drown. Yeah. And then it turns out he's still alive and he's just the second movie is him as a grown up. I guess he was just fucking around in the woods for 20 years. Yeah. Just eating rats or whatever. Yeah, it doesn't they never <laughs> it, really explain it. No. And then this movie tries to make it seem like he was bullied at camp yeah. instead of just neglected. But does he have like I'm trying I'm trying to figure out a way to like say this without it being offensive. No, he there's something yeah, he's like there's something wrong with him. Yeah. By the way, uh, they bam, they never ukulele. quite get, <laughs> they never quite get into it other than like there's a hint that he was like a special needs kid. Yes. He was deformed at some point. Yeah. Right, right. Well, he had a physical deformity and that he was right. mentally disabled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I figured that was probably why he got bullied. But I'm like, okay, but like, what is it that... Because clearly there's something going on there. Well, there's also the question of how much of these nightmare sequences are memories and how much of them are like Freddy, like... Yeah. yeah, or Freddy manipulating the story. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that's what's hard to tell. Well, and... 
the the real answer is that filmmakers had no real plan because right. they didn't have a plan. Friday the 13th comes out not too long after the first Halloween movie make came, right. hit the theaters and they just wanted to make something to to piggyback off that success and they're like uh camp counselors i don't know that's one of the reasons why the um the rights are just like totally fucked to these movies because like all over the place one person owns the name friday the 13th Mm -hmm. one person owns the name jason Mm -hmm. uh you know sean cunningham who created the franchise never wanted jason to be the killer he still says that's the dumbest thing they ever did Uh like to the point where like when they made friday or uh uh, jason goes to hell he told the director like i don't want to see that fucking hockey mask i don't even want jason in the movie which is like why they had to like make it into like this weird demon worm well the hockey mask is makes no fucking sense no like when you see three other than it's just a thing he found yeah it's just a thing yeah, yeah like, where, where did he, he get, get a hockey mask he kills a guy and takes it he just finds it yeah that's literally all it is. <laughs> he just finds it so what if it like there's an alternate universe where he's like wearing like a baseball catcher's, <laughs> catcher's yeah. mitt on his head and then and then where does he find this like abandoned house that he can just like shack up in great question this is basically a, a qu- questions we need to ask all these are great questions questions not homeless brandy (laughs) i mean he was 11 years old when he died i mean i think he was pretty homeless at that point these are great questions for any of the friday movies yeah not this one (laughs) no this is this is part of the issue i have with jason (laughs) and his mom is his mom is like joe dirt's parents where she didn't really look I, I want to see little deformed Jason popping out of a trash can saying, look, it, it's the good stuff. None of that pussy skull. <laughs> I would love to see it. So you're saying there's an alternate universe where this movie exists. With, uh, Jason Joe Dirt. Right. <laughs> He's just walking around with a machete like, I got the poo on me. <laughs> Y'all keep referring to them as the Friday movies. In my head, I just keep immediately going to Ice Cube. <laughs> I love that. Dude, that would be the crossover for the ages. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> I would watch that. Yes. So Jason gets Jason starts drowning in the nightmare, which like so Kia has to give him mouth to mouth, and this leads to my favorite line in the movie. Yes. Oh my god. D- yes. The maybe the worst line with the worst <laughs> line delivery. Oh, can I guess? Can I guess what it is? Uh-huh. Is is it Jason Ritter shouted, Kia, he has asthma. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Kia, he has asthma. I Dude, I I lost it. I had to step away from the TV for a <laughs> No, I honestly felt like a terrible person in this scene because one, I laughed, and then when she was like, "You mean you're not coming?" I was like, "Ma'am, I think that's literally what he's doing right now." Right. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, that was the point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's what are also what are these counselors supposed to be doing? Because they're both clearly closed. Right. Aggressively dry humping. Aggressively you don't Aggressively do dry humping. <laughs> yeah. In the like in the middle of broad daylight yes. in front of everybody. <laughs> the front of the kids that this is why i think it's not meant to be literal no it's not <laughs> like not even trying to like be discreet in the woods but i kind of <laughs> i kind of want just that because they like they do like a speed effect yeah to like make it weirder and, and like more dreamlike Wait, why does she have to be next to him while she they're both under that's a hazard i have no idea Look, this is one one of the things about freddy is that he's an extra ass bitch yes. yeah so he likes to <laughs> He likes to make things in dramatic ways. I, I kind of want this right here just just looped. Just I the fast this. forward part. Oh no. This actress is going for it. <laughs> no, the way like the way that it's spread the way that it's sped up, like when I was drunk watching this the oh, first no. time, like I was dying. Right. <laughs> I'm like, what kind of sex scene is this? No, the director's like, I'm gonna get some tits in this movie from these lead girls or not. <laughs> no, not only tits, a dead girl's tits. A dead girl's tits, yeah. <laughs> they also give freddy during the opening monologue where he's telling the audience what's going on give him like vampire teeth yeah but then they never With blood all over them they never do it again nope. <laughs> that was confusing. well he does when he is inexplicably a demon for one shot yeah. oh is it when he's underwater is that the show I, yeah when he comes out of the uh when he comes out of the lake and jumps like yeah. has that great shot of him jumping onto the dock yeah and then he they, they have demon makeup that's not seen anywhere else and is not really explained no nope. that's true no reason speaking of jumping into the lake when uh, Jason gets thrown from the van, I laugh. Oh, oh it's that's hilarious. hilarious. No, that shit was funny <laughs> as fuck. They might as well have piped in like... 
Yeah. Look, there was a lot of like slapstick comedy moments in this movie that actually was funny. <laughs> we have to talk about how many how many people get fucking yeeted throughout oh, yeah. this whole movie. Honestly, if you look at this movie as a comedy, it's it's not as bad. I think a total of five people get yeeted. Just yeah. Oh yeah. Freddie does. Jason does. Both of them do. Um, Kelly Rowland, the guy with the glow sticks, like everybody just <laughs> Lenderman does. Oh yeah, when we get to the final showdown, I have a lot of thoughts on the yeeting. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. oh yeah, with the what do you call it? Those tanks. La- I mean, the whole showdown is just a series of shots of them getting thrown to different areas and then fighting a little bit more and then getting hit by something and flying across. Absolutely, like, pretty much. But do- hang on, Nathan, we're not there yet. Nathan, we're not there yet. What? Why, why does Kelly Rowland have Oh, yeah, when she has to give him mouth to mouth. But why does she have to? Again, we're giving mouth to mouth to a zombie. Yeah. No, yeah, that's what didn't make any sense to me. I'm like, she literally didn't have to do this. Water is literally pumping out of his mouth. Out right. of his mask holes. <laughs> In droves. Like, mouth to mouth ain't going to do a goddamn thing. Right. Like, so they're saving him for what again? So that, so that he can kill Freddy. Yeah, they want to pull Freddy out of the dream world and okay. then let him, Jason beat his ass. I think this is the part where I stop camping. Caring. They wanted to let them duke it out and then run back home. Yeah. As if, like, they wouldn't come back for them afterwards or something. The plan is have Lori go under, have her grab Freddy, bring her out back to the real world, which will bring Freddy, and then Jason and him will fight, and Jason will kill him. Yeah. Okay, so two immortal beasts won't kill each other and won't kill you two. Okay. Right, yeah. I was like, this isn't a very good plan. But the problem, yeah, I was gonna say, the problem is, whoever wins, you still have to deal. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you still have to deal with the other one. Oh, God. His fucking hills have eyes ass face. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he just gets yeeted out of the fucking van. Why did he had the gun in his hand and he shot next to the driver? Yeah. Never mind. There know. he goes. Just yeets out of the fucking <laughs> I just want to know the budget for like the effects because it's just all over the place. Nothing. Right. Nothing. I will say though, the shot of Freddy leaping out of the water is genuinely a great shot. Yes. Oh, it's fucking awesome. I agree. It's amazing. I think that was in a trailer and I'm like, it was. Right. was. Yeah, that's definitely, that was the trailer but shot. It wasn't blood red like this. <laughs> But no, that shot is great for him, and then Jason gets the great shot of him on fire in the cornfield. Like yeah. they both do equally get good shots. They both get their hero shots. Yeah, I I love the look on Freddy's face when he realizes he's in the real world. Oh yeah, he's like, like the, oh, the, the sort of like, oh, I'm fucked now. Just the, ah, yes. Fuck. I mean, that's how I wake up every morning. It's fine. <laughs> right. I gotta fucking do this shit again. I mean, I get it's part of the character, but I really, really could do without the whole freddie being a fucking rapist yeah. stuff in this movie like no i agree yeah that's why i'm like why can't they just stick to the first uh nightmares right it's more of him just being a killer so you're talking about when he's gonna finger fuck her with the his blade yeah but i i was also going to talk about the opening scene where he's licking that little girl's photograph i'm like oh. dude I oh this part where the floor like takes her out and like pushes her into the wall that shit was hilarious that was oh, good yeah. i wish they would have done more of that yeah. So there are elements of this movie where I'm just like, wow, if you just would have done that, oh, yeah. it would have been so much better. Why are these night scenes lit so well? Like, That's other bunny. That's their budget. Again, the- that intense ass lightning, man. <laughs> um, just some good lights. For sure. When Freddy does get pulled into the real world and him and Jason are having their little duking it out in the cabin that's on fire. Um, I have a... D- does Jason have balls of steel? Yes. Oh, yeah. Because Freddy goes to kick him in the balls and then he <laughs> and gets it hurt. hurts. Yeah, he, Freddy gets hurt. I think that's what happens when you have zombie balls. Yeah, I zombie guess. balls. Yeah, I was going to say, like, I don't think he can feel them because he's dead. Yeah, but he also drowned. I don't know. He walked in a cornfield on fire, so I don't know if he can feel a lot of shit. Sure. No, I was going to say, if, if they've already done the pinball thing by this point. I wish they would have done something where, like... When he kicked him in the balls, it did like an anvil sound effect, like a ting. <laughs> oh, like he's like wearing a chastity belt. Oh, yeah, lean more into it. Yes. I mean, you might as well at that point. Why not? <laughs> oh, I like how she wakes up when she's on fire. I'm like, wait, what? I mean, that's kind of a clever little way of like getting her awake. But yeah, but it's just like, well, OK. <laughs> yeah. But also, I'm like, there's so many times where like somebody is in the middle of like being killed by Freddy. And no matter what, like people outside of them are doing to wake them up. They don't, but I'm like, okay, so she wakes up. I'm like, they pick and choose, like, who gets to survive Freddy. Absolutely. Oh, the shot? Oh, is this the shot where they throw, when Freddy goes through the window and Jason drags him? I thought that was awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That dude. Was so no, yeah, cool. that, was, that was good. It was like, Jason gets a point for that. There's some WWE moves throughout this there scene. There's definitely WWE moves. Yeah. <laughs> I think there might have been a promotion during WWE, like Monday Night Raw. That's Raw right. Oh, yes. Jason. I, this is like a lost memory, but I feel they this. did a weigh in. No, they did. They did a weigh in yeah. in Las Vegas. Yes. yes. 
Okay, I'm so happy that someone else remembers this, but I remember the promos during Monday Night Raw. Oh, yeah. Yep. Of, and it was a huge thing. Yep. They also did, they did an interview on, like, Fox or something like yeah. that, where Jason, like, they were both in character, and Ken Kersinger just doesn't answer any questions, and it, it was, it's actually really funny. <laughs> like, imagine, this movie would be so much better if they had, like, fucking JR from WWE, like, commentating, like, oh my god, he fucking, <laughs> my god, that's Jason's music. <laughs> <laughs> my god you tore him in half <laughs> dude if they would have if you would have heard glass breaking <laughs> yeah. oh my and god and then stone cold came out of the woods take my money take all of, of my 10 money. out of 10 like dude if freddy just popped jason with a stone cold stunner and jason pops up like the undertaker yes. oh it would have uh. been amazing <laughs> hit him with the rock bottom or Best yet, though, Freddy Krueger hits Jason with that sweet chin music. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? A little Shawn Michaels? Yep. That would have been the fucking best. Anyway, we get... Oh, fuck you! <laughs> we get to what's objectively the worst... The most offensive 30 uh, seconds of film. Oh, yeah. Again, the words in these order... Oh, my God. Yeah, I was like, why did he have to have the dark meat comment? Because it like, was a play on fresh meat. And yeah, I'm like, it's I a play on the joke you. from the fourth movie, but it's bad. Yeah, but it was racist as fuck. Yes, exactly. Freddy, Freddy's killed black people before in these movies. Right. Yeah, I was like, why? There was no reason for this. It's awful. And then, the, then she said the F word. The I'm famous like, oh. improv. Yeah, then they gave her that line i was like none of that was necessary in the script so well what, here's the thing is it's actually not in the script exactly the, uh, improvised <laughs> Sorry, I'm puking. Yeah, Ugh. it was improvised on the set, and apparently the screenwriters uh, during an early screening said, "Hey, can we please get that removed from the film? Like, that's awful." Um, and they left it in the film, and like apparently at, at the premiere, the screenwriters were mortified. Like, they, their names were on hate speech, basically. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, it's, it is hate speech both ways. Oh, it, it is. Yeah. yeah, you have a racist comment and then a homophobic one to battle it, and it's like, hey, man. Yeah, and all in the same scene. Jason's the winner here. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember uh, Kelly Rowland went on, and I actually looked looked up this clip recently, but Kelly Rowland went on Conan O'Brien to promote the movie. Mm -hmm. Poor girl. Um, like when it was coming out. And like the last thing she says, like before they cut to commercial, she goes, I cuss Freddy out, y'all. Uh, and like, it's like, oh, n like 20, like almost 20 years later, it's still objectively the worst part of the film. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I just didn't think it was going to turn to an episode of Wild and Out. Although I did like, although I did like her death. Yes. No. Like her being ye that was funny. Her death is great. Mm -hmm. Can I say something, though, about her death? Absolutely. We talked about a lot of the logical leaps that this movie makes. I think none more so than how Jason's machete functions. Uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> As a bat. You said logical leaps. I thought you were going to say logical leaps. I was like, well, yeah. So, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes it cuts it cuts people in half yeah. with zero effort. Yeah. Sometimes it just slashes them until they burst open and sprays. It's all in the wrist. <laughs> He's got good control. It's in the flick of the wrist. Well, yeah. When he kills... Kia, he just smacks her across the right. Oh, okay, that's hilarious. <laughs> that is so funny. Yeah, like it didn't cut her at all. But like the funniest part of that was like right before he does that, she was the one that was hyping up his knife. Yeah. yeah. Or his machete. But then me. and then um Freddy, when he uses the machete, it basically acts like a blunt instrument, like a baseball yes. bat or yeah. something. So. He doesn't have that. He doesn't have the flick of the wrist. Like it's all in the wrist, DC. I don't know what you want, man. So basically <laughs> Jason is Thor. Yeah. Yes. Give me an MCMU movie with Jason on it. Fucking oh, damn. <laughs> hey, we got we in the multiverse now. Call Kevin Feige right now. I mean, hey, they should have been in the Mortal Kombat movies. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> you know, Kia's death scene was originally even better. Yeah. Explain. There's there's in the in one version of the screenplay, uh, I think might maybe like the last draft before the shooting draft, she she like gets cornered by Jason and says something like uh, she tries to basically pull a Nancy from Nightmare Part One, where she's like, uh, I don't believe in you. You can't scare me. I take all all your power. And then Freddy kind of walks out and goes like, that's the wrong one, bitch. And then <laughs> that's when Jason kills her. That's amazing. That's hilarious. Right. Do that instead. So much better. Am I the only one that found that found like their head to head battle actually pretty boring? Parts of it. Yeah, I thought it was boring too. Well, they hyped it up so much. Like after a while, I was like, okay, I'm ready for it to end now. Like, yeah. yeah. Freddie does a Shrek impression. Ugh. It's very weird. But 
I got to say, too, when when Lori and Jason Ritter's character are getting on the boat and he's like, come on, we got to go. And she goes, no, I'm staying. For what? And he's like, for what? And yeah. then she she gives like an impassioned speech and they start blaring new metal oh, underneath. I yeah. couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a isn't it Sepultura that starts playing oh, or something like so. that? But yeah. This whole last battle at this construction site is basically just freddie being a fucking doofus like it yep. turns yeah. into slapstick comedy oh yeah his, he's like woo, 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 woo. yeah because he's like yeah making all these moves against jason and then all of it backfires so it's like okay and yeah jason's standing perfectly still and yeah. so you're saying it goes full circle with the three stooges oh, <laughs> wow. Wow. oh my god yes like, all i had to do was <laughs> add the sound effects to all these these parts yeah brandy we can make this happen i don't know i I found i'm with you brandy i found this fight kind of boring yeah well the way they hyped it up along with the wwe segment which i found on youtube which I'm totally watch. oh hell yes awesome but yeah they, i remember the hype for this and seeing the trailers and then seeing this movie i'm like that's it yeah, yeah. there's some bits that are really fun it's because jr isn't commentating it that's why <laughs> right that is the missing segment Oh, and Jason Voorhees with the elbow drop. Oh. <laughs> and Freddy with the torpedo assault. Oh, he tore him in half. It's, see, it's way better with the voiceover. This sounds yeah. great. Someone's got to have that on YouTube. I'm sure somebody's done that. I think this was also boring, too, because I'm like, well, I know neither one of them's going to die. Like, yeah, they're right. like undead yeah. creatures. So it's like, where's the stakes? That's another thing. They're Im they're immortal. But I guess since we're there, should I, should I run through the... The ending? Yeah. All right, buddy. Get the, get oh, over sure. Way. Yes, please. Please recap the ending. Here we go. That Jason gets his fingers cut off, which is a yeah. weird effect that we'll see next in next week's movie. <laughs> yes, we will. Lori gets two hero moments, which is it's you, you, you get one. Yes. She gets the line of like, welcome to my nightmare or whatever. Yeah. And then she gets another one. Welcome to my world, bitch. Yeah. yeah. Go to she goes go to hell and then she gets go well welcome to my world bitch yeah oh, I thought she did the Olympic torch with her titties out <laughs> yes. covered in blood I was gonna say I'm glad you brought it up because I didn't want to but <laughs> I mean this in a genuinely real way and not as a pun or anything but sh her bra is doing so much work in this movie it really is <laughs> it's incredible yeah that... there it is Olympic torch oh titties. my god yeah. Adrian <laughs> <laughs> dude what if it no okay can I can I pitch a better Ending right here? Sure. You guys all saw the two towers, right? Yep, yeah. The Lord of the Rings, the two towers. Yeah. yeah. When she comes out with the with the torch, wouldn't it be great if she just headfirst dove into the gas where they both oh, are? Absolutely it would have been. <laughs> all three of them went. Yeah, that's a great well, dude, and the thing like again, this was made for fucking WWE, because yeah. when she comes running, that's when you cue her theme music. Yep. Oh, Oh yeah, yeah. The dun, dun. like oh my god, uh, it's her the with the metal. with the steel chair. Ba with da ba da bang da bang da. Okay, my new my new um my new editing project is having this shot of her running out with the torches and then cutting to that guy blowing up Helm's Deep. <laughs> <laughs> but can you also, can you please... Oh, a chair. She's got oh a chair. chair. Oh my god, it's Carol with the steel chair. <laughs> By god, that's Lori's music. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Amazing. I'm going to put glass breaking and a bunch of other great stuff out of that. Yeah. This is everything I've always wanted. This fight is not that great. No. I can't, it's just missing the commentary. No, I was, I was just waiting for it to end. It's, it's, kind of a sad way for robert england to end his career yeah. his legacy as this character it's just not it's not great well technically he reprised the role at one more convention yeah. yes on the goldbergs oh yes and on the goldbergs yeah, yeah. Oh, he went out sad this is sad yep. yeah i mean he's not even doing it alongside the jason right but the way that they ended it they made it seem like there was going to be like a part two right there should have been there's no reason they should not have had a sequel i think there was supposed to be a sequel because like they had his like head wink at the camera like it was going to be another like freddy movie or something i think the students just decided to do a reboot yeah yeah and then they did nothing with that so nathan i'm sorry can you recap sure what happens here at the ending of the movie yeah the the boys uh slash each other up a good bit <laughs> uh laurie blows up the dock which seems to kill them there's a death star ring when the explosion happens <laughs> which is inexplicable um, <laughs> and uh freddy comes out of the water there's a great shot where it you think it's jason walking up on the dock with the machete a good little fake out i did like that yeah i like that a lot jason pops out of the water kills freddy with his own hand and then uh laurie grabs the machete and chops his head off 
Then we cut forward an unexplicable amount of time, and Jason is coming out of the water to the soundtrack of Congo, it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> Holding Freddy Krueger's head, which winks at the camera. Oh. Yeah. Smash to Il Nino over the credits. Dude, this... God, this this cinematographer and this director so badly wanted to get Monica Kina like a topless shot of her, like oh, just yeah. the way they fit. where they frame her, yeah, with shoulders up. Yeah, yeah, they're so trying to get anything they can out of it. It's for sure. Did anyone else wait for an after credit scene? I don't know if like oh yeah, you just destroyed me, but I was kind of sitting there like, uh, no, I I went straight to bed. I was like, is there anything else? I turned it off and was like, bye. <laughs> it really wasn't a thing for a long time. I mean, yeah, the only time I do that is for Marvel movies. Yeah. Yeah. I don't understand how Jason kills Freddy with his own hand, right? Because like he just shoves it through. Well, yeah, like. The weight <sighs> of that hand, it would just be a dead limb. Like it wouldn't have. Again, the... let's get into the physics. <laughs> no, let's not. Yeah. This was the first year that I think I recall seeing a post-credit scene, and it's because the Matrix Reloaded played a teaser trailer for That's the Matrix right. That's Revolutions right. after the credits. Yep. And we might uh, we might be talking a little bit about the Matrix that later in the season. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> so that's. That's Freddy versus Jason. Um, it sure is, guys. Let's let's bring back something we usually do with horror movies. Um, let's talk about what we think our best the best kill is of the movie. Yeah. Ooh, I already know mine. Go ahead. The bed fold. Yeah. The bed it, fold. Like it felt good. Like my again, my back hurt. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely was a good one to start out with for sure. Like, so you you trying to go out with relief. Yes. <laughs> also, that has to be the most creative because every other kill is just does nothing for me right sure, sure. start off with a bang and it then... was the most creative in this in this movie yeah, in this movie brandy what about you i guess the the kelly Rowland death i don't know like her being yeeted was just funny to me yeah. and just <laughs> the fact that it's like okay all of a sudden this is a baseball bat but, now but also brandy she said the f word i'm like you get what you fucking deserve right <laughs> it's like instant karma for her well no that was part of what made it funny too was like you're just kind of cringing and then suddenly she dies it's like yeah well, you're like, oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> um Nathan, what about you? So I uh, so the I think the f- most fun kill is the bed kill, but I got to give props to Linderman's death, yeah. which is fucking yeah. devastating. Yeah, <laughs> he, he's the only person in these franchises who just bleed out. He bleeds out next to a tree and like tells her it's going to be fine. And then she walks off and he's dead immediately. Yep. <laughs> Dude, he has buckets of blood pouring. Literally right before she was about to walk off, I was like, he's he's about to die right now. And then right? she's like, yeah, he's dead. Was I supposed to ship their relationship? I, I don't. don't know. I don't. I think the movie's trying to make that happen. Uh, I was not getting that. I, I did not feel that. But I also didn't care about any of these characters. So. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you don't care. Um, Mally, what about you? Best kill? Um, I Okay, I do. So I'm going to say Linderman's definitely the most devastating. Uh-huh. The bed is the most creative. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Mark's is the coolest. Oh, but sure. My favorite favorite wait is... who's mark <laughs> exactly <laughs> who's mark? yeah i don't remember the kids names mark is the guy in the bathroom yeah. oh yeah that was good i forgot my favorite though I, I gotta give it to the flaming machete throw it's good yeah. it's fun it makes no sense but it's a cool image <laughs> That that guy so obviously has blood in his mouth that he's trying to keep oh, it yeah. in oh, until yeah. the machete hits him. <laughs> um, no, Mark's for sure, I think, is the most brutal to me. It's like so reminiscent of the old Nightmare movies. Yeah. But I kind of like the deputy getting electrocuted oh, by yeah. Jason. Through Jason. Oh, that's so dumb. <laughs> Through Jason making a current. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty great. I mean, honorable mention to the stoner diet cut in half. Yeah. 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 The thought was there. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, that was my second favorite one, too. Um. All right. Well, what about... Um, one of the other great uh, segments of the show, at least I think, uh, Prop Cop. <laughs> okay, now, Dustin, at the top of the show, or this, this might have been before we started, you were worried that you and I picked the same thing. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to do a three count, three, two, one, and then we're going to say it, okay? Okay. <laughs> okay. Three, two, one, the, the glow van. stick outfit. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I thought for sure you were gonna go with the fucking van. Dustin and I have the same one. Oh, the- <laughs> I'm just guys. I'm just gonna say, me and the glow stick outfit, DC driving that van, we gotta oh, have yeah. a good time. <laughs> looking, looking like fucking Wes from Road Warrior going out to the club. <laughs> I was gonna say if we get if we get the the bong from the caterpillar, we're gonna have a fucking great time at that van. <laughs> oh, no. DC, next time next time I'm in LA. 
we doing it big. Okay. Right. Well, Nathan, this is your movie. What are you yeah. picking? Oh, no, I, I still want the van. We can share it on weekends. Yeah, uh, we can fine. alternate. Yeah, we'll alternate weekends for sure. <laughs> uh, Brandy, what about you? What do you? What's an item from the movie that you want to you wanna own? Uh, I feel like it's like an obvious one, but but Freddy's glove. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, can't go wrong. That's a, that's a that's a good one. Yeah, that would be great for cutting veggies. I have two. Oh, okay. I have two. Okay. Hell yeah. Here's the thing: that hypnosil and that folding bed. I would have like a movie <laughs> fucking night. All right, I would sleep so good. God damn, Jen, just go see a chiropractor. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, get your back looked at, girl. Like what? I know. <laughs> like get that hypnosil. And my z She is so hyper-focused on that fucking bed. <laughs> Look, the hypnosil, z and I have a white claw, and I sleep in that bed. Bless. It's fucking Gucci. I will feel so good. Amazing. Uh, we gotta, we gotta like, get a GoFundMe going for Jim to go to a chiropractor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Like, next time I visit Atlanta, Jen's just going to be with a fucking cane. Dude, I'm just walking like the girl from Exorcist when you and I come to the door. It's fine. Oh, I forgot. You're in Atlanta, girl. I can recommend a chiropractor. I got you. <laughs> Don't even worry about it. There you go. <laughs> I know, Jen's just, like, walking around damn near crippled. <laughs> I mean, yeah. This is, um... This is a segment that we introduced since you guys have been on, but, um... This is a, a segment called Bit Part... This is um, if there's a small role in the movie, not not a named character, preferably, um, but just a small little cameo you'd have in the movie. Um, Mally, let's start with you. Who would be a good bit part for you? I want to be one of the kids that pushes baby Jason into the water. (laughs) (laughs) Look, don't feel bad because that was one of my first initial ones, too. And then I was like, I won't be that terrible. (laughs) I went with my gut. I went with my gut. Jen, what about you? So the girl in the police station with her eyes cut out, so I don't have to watch this fucking movie. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. Wait, Jen, Jen, you didn't say the guy that got killed in the bed? Oh. That wasn't you. Uh, that would be too obvious at this point. No, that was my second one. But that little girl with her eyes cut out, that's a look. Yeah, man, talk about a bait and switch. Hey, man, hey, you know what? You know what? It's a feature. It's a feature. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Brandy, what about you? Who's a good uh, good role that you could take? Uh, I'd be the worm. <laughs> oh my God. Ooh, nice. Hell yeah. <laughs> I'd be the stoner worm. Brandy just lit as fuck as a worm. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> and then I get to possess people. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Nathan, Nathan, what about you? Uh, I want to be the school nurse who has just checked out. <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised Lori didn't have like a wet paper towel on her forehead. She was just like, I fucking hate my job. No, side note, when Ke- Kayla's like, is, like, how long is this going to take? Your friend is passed out. Yeah. What are you asking? Yeah, what is the question? <laughs> Look, I don't understand what you're asking about your friend yeah. being unconscious right now. Speaking of which... One of my favorite lines I thought was the dumbest shit I've ever heard is when Kelly Rowland's having that nightmare sequence and she asked the nurse, hey, when they do a nose job, they put you under, right? And the nurse just looks at her like, you fucking idiot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, what? under, under? Yeah. yeah, she's like, they put you all the way under, right? I'm like, like oh, my she's God. She's a school nurse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, there was a couple of different options that I was going to go with. I want, I... At first, I was really going to go with the, with Bobby Moynihan, the guy that just splashes Everclear on Jason. <laughs> um, right, right, right. And then I then I also thought, you know what would be great is you could get paid to sleep. And it was one of the people in the comas hooked up to oh, the machines. Absolutely. Nice. Oh, nice. yeah, that has one of one of the weirdest lines I've ever heard where Jason Ritter's like, oh, they're the ones who wouldn't stop dreaming. And yeah. I was like, you just found this place. Yeah. How do you fucking know? <laughs> but But ultimately... <laughs> Ultimately, I had to go with I want to I want to be Mike. Who's Mike? Who the fuck yeah, is who's Mike? Mike? Oh, you guys don't know who Mike is. Mike is the guy that the girl in the opening scene keeps asking if he's the one rustling around in the bushes. So I don't have to be on screen. I'm just a non-existent. That's gr- oh yeah. Hey, fuck you then. <laughs> well, actually, so they actually were in the script. There was an intro of an actual Mike. Oh, good. And they had an intro of them like fucking then skinny dipping. I don't know. Cute. You know, Jason was like, I have a goal. They, they cut me out. They cut me out, and I'm good with that. You get the fuck on in the movie, Dustin. <laughs> good for you, buddy. Oh, but then they cut my scene now. That's okay. Damn. Oh, <laughs> you got your dick out for nothing. <laughs> next time, I'll next time I'll get that SAG after card. So <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time for him. Oh, wow, oh. wow, wow. Oh, it's funny because it's true. <laughs> oh, my God. oh, I love you, Dustin. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, no dick 
Uh, Nathan, you did a lot of research for this this episode. Oh, sure. You want to tell me just some some little factoids that you found? Because you actually read the book about the making of this movie. Is that right? Yeah. The... You put in so much work for this movie. <laughs> for this movie. I know. I will. It's something I've always been kind of fascinated with because it just seems like this movie should have been a fucking no brainer. And yeah. it somehow was like the hardest thing to make. They kept tripping over their digs to make this movie. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like Dustin McNeil wrote this great book called slash of the Titans, which great title. Mm -hmm. um, and it it kind of goes into all the different versions of the screenplay, talks to the different people who worked on making it. And uh, I just kind of wrote down like some highlights of some of the weirdest scripts that came through. I mean, for some reason, so many of these screenplays relied on secondary villains besides Freddy and Jason. Um, a lot of the early scripts were uh, revolved around a cult that worshipped Freddy, what? which is called the Fredheads in some of them. Uh, fucking, uh, of course there were cults. Uh, somebody saw Halloween 6. Right. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, so yeah. some of the scripts were crazy comedic to kind of follow on Freddy's dead and stuff like that. And some of them were Un unflinchingly dark and the scripts was written the scripts were written by people like you know brandon braga and mm -hmm. david goyer and like people that we like know as like you know uh, major hollywood screenwriters mm -hmm. um years later david goyer like did this interview after his script got turned down and people asked him if he saw like the final version and he was like actually no because i think you know team up movies uh are crossover movies are creative bankruptcy i'm glad that it didn't happen like this motherfucker went on to write batman v yeah. superman so yeah. like, oh, like co-write it God. so like yeah um How dare you yeah and oh you know and also he's the guy that you know made wesley snipes quit acting for a long time <laughs> wow. too um, but yeah um so in a lot of these scripts they tried to tie freddy and jason's backstories together more obviously there's one version where jason was one of the elm street kids that had been like abducted when he was a child mm. there's one version where F freddy was actually jason's dad and he what? had like attacked <laughs> pamela Voorhees. no yeah. no 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 yes. no that's no, no, that's no, doing no, too no, much. No, no. Mm -mm. nobody wants that. There's, there's one, one of the most insane scripts starts in medieval France and reveals <laughs> that, that Freddy's so actually a demon that's existed for thousands of years. Incredible. Sure. God, please no. So they were gonna army of darkness. This essentially. Apparently. Oh, that's another. What? That's another. Uh, don't bring Ash into this. Mm -mm, yeah. Nope. No. Mm -mm. The sequel we almost got was Freddy versus Jason versus Ash. Yeah, the comic. And then they did it as a comic book. Yeah, which is really really fun oh uh, well that's fair but also don't involve my boyfriend bruce campbell in this movie. <laughs> they, there was this movie somehow had like this huge online presence yes where none of the information regarding it was accurate <laughs> no that was the thing was like uh robert england gave a couple of interviews where he said like i would find out that the movie was still in development or pre-production because people would ask me about a new script that they had read during an interview mm -hmm. and like people would tell me oh i heard chucky's in it oh. and i'm like i don't fucking think that's true but probably like i don't dude like, they were talking about that with michael myers is going to show up pinhead's going to show up well, was, i saw the pinhead was, one i saw yeah. that little yes snippet. that wasn't yeah. cool there was a there was a plan for pinhead to show up at the end a lot of the scripts ended with a gladiatorial match or a boxing fight in, in hell, hell. Mm -hmm. one of which had uh ted bundy as like the announcer mm -hmm. and the the what? people yes no let's not involve real killers that that's, the no. people in the audience included Mussolini, Hitler, Ed Gein. Oh, like, fuck? yeah, it's fucking so super offensive. Great. Yeah. 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 Adding in real killers and like terrible people. No, yes. no thank you. I agree. One script involved Freddy and Jason trying to deliver souls to the Lord of Hell, who wasn't called Satan, but was called Thanos in the script. Oh, oh my God. God. I'm about that. 15 years before the MCU. So like this guy thought he was being clever by including a Marvel character as oh. the villain. I mean, that makes the most sense to me is something of like Freddy versus Jason should be like them two trying to compete to like who can kill the most people and yes. then they just fight each other right that makes the most sense to me but i'm like 
it just doesn't seem relevant like right yeah but this is dumb right all of these are dumb well i mean if you're gonna do the movie i'm saying like if you're gonna do it right i'm just like where in this do you fit marvel into right <laughs> oh freddy's glove becomes the uh, infinity gauntlet okay. <laughs> <laughs> wait hang on now i'm kind of oh in God, can someone do this as a cosplay yeah, right? <laughs> i'm kind of into this everything's perfectly balanced bitch <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> hey you know someone probably has done the cosplay and i was oh sure to see that that would be a dope crossover yeah. for a cosplay yeah, like, right <laughs> um a couple of the scripts took place like took a new nightmare vibe and took place in the real world and one of them like kind of forgot that halfway and like just has people confused that freddy and jason are there because they know them as fictional characters like some of these scripts were genuinely baffling impossible to follow so they were trying to get meta with that like yes you guys are supposed to be in the movies why are you here yeah, yeah. and there were there were some great kills in these two i mean there's an aspect of that that could have been funny yes that, that actually doesn't sound bad that scream yes that's exactly yeah, that basically scream. yeah i because i'm i'm personally somebody that likes like the fourth wall being broken like yeah. i'm right. a deadpool fan oh so. new nightmare new nightmare is a fantastic movie new nightmare is excellent yes. and i think that there was like a fear like when they first started writing these there was like okay well the freddy movies are comedies at this point yeah. so we have to do that and then after new nightmare came out they were like well fuck we had like Wes Craven, this movie didn't do well, but Wes Craven, you know, has brought some legitimacy back to this character. Mm -hmm. So now we have to go serious. And so some of them took like a weird true crime angle with like elements that you'd see later in like Halloween 2018. Mm -hmm. And uh, like there was there was one script that had survivors of the previous movies teaming up like Alice uh, okay, from the Nightmare would, movies and Tommy Jarvis. From, from Yeah, there were some really cool ideas. It's just all of them kind of don't work for one reason or another. And somehow we ended up getting like the best <laughs> of these movies, even though it's not good. The best? Are you sure? Oh, I'm, are you sure yeah. about that? <laughs> it's a mess. Uh, yeah, it, like some of these, one of these ended, I mean, look, one of these movies ended with Freddy uh, somehow uploading himself into a satellite so he could no. beam himself Trans around the world. Oh yes. My God. <laughs> and so okay. the heroes defeat him by pointing the satellite at the sun Pass. and disintegrating right. him because that's I'm how in. satellites work. I'm fucking Pass. in on that Pass. one. <laughs> one of them involved Freddy snorting someone up his nose and they have to fight this monster called the Booger Man. I mean, like, okay. yeah, I feel like that. You're just, just just throwing in whatever. You're just <laughs> at this point. Are people letting their like kids write the scripts now or something? Like, right. <laughs> kindergartners are writing those. They're like, this is the version that my nephew came up with. <laughs> <laughs> And it is like it is wild, though, like it took that long to get this movie made. And then this movie does like five times its budget and doesn't get a sequel. It's yeah. just it's so strange to me. Um, I think they overthought it. And we got one reboot, reboot each of both of these franchises and then nothing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, you you make a great point. Like they did overthink it because like again like they're like oh we have to wait for the right script and that's kind of what they're saying about nightmare now where they're like there's no nothing like friday the 13th is a legal nightmare nightmare on elm street they could make any time now can i pitch yeah go ahead the, the two ideas that i want for both of these franchises as someone who's not a huge fan sure let's hear them let's hear them is it jason in the snow i want jason in the snow <laughs> oh yeah God. i want a, a snow capped mountain like maybe people get trapped in like a, a snow cap but I'm in. people have been asking for that for years it would make his hockey mask come into play a lot like he could be like skating <laughs> that's a great he could point be ice skating and shit it doesn't have to be a reboot either just make it the same jason like you know pick up after three or something yeah. sure but yeah i think you don't overthink it just yeah, make yeah. just make don't him do all this extra shit it's like you already got the character like give him some people to kill yeah Ooh. right just do it we went years without a jason movie between jason goes to hell and jason x and oh they were God. always just like well we were waiting on the right script and i'm like what what do you mean the right script <laughs> like half of these movies is just people go to a camp and die yeah like let's fucking make that movie yeah. here's here's what i want from a nightmare movie um and it seems like we're gonna get this with halloween kills but like i think so the idea of a town like they 
hinted at it in this movie of a town that is just like we're over this shit. Yeah. We're covering up everything. I want to like we see it in the Halloween Kills trailer, like a town that is just fed up and like it turns into an angry mob. Yes. It's a town fighting Freddy instead yeah. of just like a bunch of teens and then people don't believe it. Like the, the formula is dead. Right. Move in a new direction. Right. And I want that with a nightmare movie. That would make so much sense. Right. But just also focus on kills. Like yeah. right. some really cool kills. That's yes. what we want. Do creative kills. And, yeah, just yeah, just make it cool. Yeah. Uh, dude, I think this Halloween Kills movie is going to fucking deliver. And yeah, I do too. <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, so O'Malley's, O'Malley's read, read the, the script, script for Halloween, Halloween Kills. Kills. Oh, oh, no. I will say, uh, do you guys know, speaking of Lord of the Rings earlier, Peter Jackson wrote a rejected screenplay for... Oh, yeah. I, I heard about that. that. I heard about that. I would read the fuck out of that. For Nightmare Part 6. I rewatched Dead Alive, and I know it would be good. Oh, yeah. yeah. I do love Dead it Alive. It would rule. And his concept was that... Freddy had become a joke and kids were literally having parties where they'd take sleeping pills so oh that my. they could go to the dream world and beat the shit out of him. <laughs> which, <laughs> that's fucking awesome. I'm, I would watch that. I'm in. You're like, I'm yeah, 100% let's get drunk in. and kick Freddy's ass. <laughs> right. <laughs> jump this monster in his dream world that's amazing sounds like a great time <laughs> that's like jurassic world where they're like oh dinosaurs are boring now it's like what <laughs> right so you're basically saying euphoria like <laughs> yes. beat the shit out of freddy krueger amazing oh you know that nate character would get a kick out of it if right. you pitch tomorrow zendaya versus freddy I'd, I'd watch it i fucking swear to god i would watch that movie i would go broke because i would keep watching <laughs> over and over again. Hey, look, if she gets high enough she could probably take yeah. it that that's that's all absolutely fascinating nathan it's a it's a weird it's a weird deep dive but i'm i'm glad i i'm glad i read it like there's it's just a, it was literally page after page of me just being like really that was where okay that was the next logical step up. okay do you guys know who has the right to the friday the 13th i do film franchise <laughs> nathan why don't you tell us for those who don't know oh my <clears throat> lebron james wait what, what? <laughs> no, why? no he's not lebron james has the film rights to friday the 13th <laughs> but not to Jason. But not to Jason, the character. Right. But what if that was in the new Space Jam movie? I've not seen it. I was it about to say. What? You know what? Uh, you you would not be far off if Jason was somewhere in that movie. <laughs> yeah, if you can get the guys from Clockwork Orange in yes. it and the nurse oh God, or the nun no. from Pennywise oh <laughs> is in it. Yeah. Shut, I'm not going to watch this don't, movie. Don't. You're good. No matter how many times HBO Max tells me, I'm not it's, watching Hey, I will tell you, it's the new litmus test of quality. So, <laughs> is, it a, is it a movie? <laughs> is it a movie? Is it a movie? Yeah, like, yeah. LeBron James does not need to be in movies. I tell you what, though, better actor than All Michael right. Jordan. <laughs> far. Hey, 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 hey. I mean, neither one of them no. need to be, honestly. Yeah. Well, let's um, let's get to the whole point of the show. The reason why we're here. Yeah. The silver lining oh. to Freddy v. Jason. Who would like to start us off? I got one. Go. Okay, fine. Fuck you, Nathan. No, you go. <laughs> you go. No, let's hear it, rookie. <laughs> this is a classic Freddy versus Jason scenario. Who's going to get to do their silver lining first? Nathan versus Mally. Oh, Whoever wins, we lose. Go. <laughs> <laughs> um, mine was Lori knows the truth, question mark, about her mom. Damn it. Good one, bitch. Damn it. Does she, though? Right. Does I know, she? Does she? Yeah, because we don't even fucking know. No, she does. She does. She does know it. She says it. My meta silver lining is the movie finally fucking got made oh, <laughs> at what again what cause at what cause i have oh i have one oh, please ahead. please hey man those two lead actresses defending themselves not to show their boobs yes. Yes. Right. Hell yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. that's good that energy hell yeah yeah just because you can get the tiffany doll to take her top off and <laughs> 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 oh my Ooh, god I forgot all about that. right like if you want titties you should have just brought tiffany in the movie uh. <laughs> <laughs> which i kind of would have been here for tiffany's a bad bitch now. she sure is is. What about you, Mally? What's your what's your silver I'm lining? I'm gonna go with Mark wasn't crazy, he was right. Who is Mark? <laughs> <laughs> We've been through this. What the fuck is juice? <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. You have to remember, we have no attachment to these characters. Sure. Uh, when the 
literally started, I'm like, everyone could die. Uh, I don't fucking care we should have just been making up character names throughout <laughs> the movie. We could have gotten away with it. We, I think and then we, fucking Ferdinand gets sliced we up. We genuinely could have convinced Brandy and Jen that it was like a Kyle Honestly. and a Tanner. Oh my God, we would have believed you. <laughs> like, you remember that guy, Josh? <laughs> yeah, I can't uh, believe what happened to Trenton. <laughs> yeah, who the fuck is Josh? Uh, dude, Bryson really fucking got it. <laughs> Why are we going for like fucking Georgia girls like names for their kids? Like Georgia white girls names for their kids like Kaylin and fucking Braylon uh, over here <laughs> Cole. fucking Kaylee uh, um, Brandy Brandy what about you do you have a silver lining for uh, us it ended uh, but uh, that's Mally's <laughs> silver lining right? yeah Mally's go to <laughs> yep yeah, yeah that was that, I was like that's my cop out one but uh, then after that I was like uh, Robert England that's the silver yeah. lining Robert England he got to play Freddy one more time yeah, yeah like I got to see Robert England. I'm always down for that. For sure. I, kind of, I I don't have a backup now, so I'm trying to think. Oh no. Because yeah, mine was that Lori knows the truth about the dad, but uh. Mm-hmm. Um. Oh, I guess you could say Jason Ritter is not crazy, and he's obviously has a, he's a terrible eyewitness, but right. <laughs> He's he's not crazy. So the pills. Yeah. Oh yeah, what what is their life like after this scene? Like they walk away after blowing up the the lake, and all of their friends are dead. They're swarmed by police cars. Yeah, I think they all go back to the mental institution. I think they all just get locked up, or they just go back to school. Because based on like what they've shown with their friends dying and stuff, they just go back to their normal lives. Right. The next day. Oh, that is also no. They have a rave in the corn. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're just gonna throw another party. So. <laughs> Immediately after. What does Jason do from after the the scene of him coming out of the lake? Does he just oh. stop? <laughs> oh wait, he probably he probably takes Freddy's head back to his lair and shows him his ukulele. Nice. Okay. He's just like he's like, hey, check out my stuff, Freddy. I wrote a song. <laughs> and then he goes back to stabbing. That's what he does. Like, what do you think he's gonna do? Not stab people? They go and have a sleepover in Kiki. <laughs> 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 they, they tell each other ghost stories and they have their little feet kicked up while they talk to each other. Love so it. So Brandy just wrote the sequel to this movie. Hey. It's like um dating a super bad when they're in the sleeping bag like freddy and jason become friends yeah. <laughs> oh my god but it's freddy and jason telling their secrets oh, i love it wait does this become the slasher broke back mountain mm. yes brandy just wrote another <laughs> sequel <laughs> i don't hate that look the sleepover it, get, it gets very intense they get very close hey man i think i feel like i know the answer to this question but i have to ask uh does anyone here recommend freddy versus jason yes i would say <laughs> yeah give it a watch if you yeah, absolutely if you like these <laughs> movies this is, this is too much. That saw it. hold on i don't have a gavel so okay. <laughs> <That's> like <a> <laughs> yeah, i was like that's a very quiet gavel <laughs> one at a time uh, mally you i think i heard you first what, what were you saying absolutely <laughs> okay all right state your case because what the fuck <laughs> nope <laughs> 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 Mally's like chaos and runs off. <laughs> no, he will take no further questions. Um, Jen, how about you? What do you, what do you think? <sighs> <laughs> no, why? You know, I, there's so many things I could watch instead of this movie. That is sure. true. I had to watch this movie in shifts. That's how terrible it was. I came back from a barbecue. I'm like, I gotta fucking finish this movie. I'm really drunk. <laughs> Can I tell you how I had to watch this movie? Yeah. <laughs> I... I was play. I had to go. I I was gonna watch it yesterday, and I decided to go into work to get some overtime in. And as I was coming home, I was like, "All right, I'm gonna watch Freddy vs. Jason, I guess, do some laundry, whatever." And as I'm getting closer and closer to my house, there I I noticed there's a helicopter circling pretty close to where my house is, uh -huh. and I'm like, "Oh, surely that's not." For my neighborhood, and I keep getting closer and closer, and the helicopter just keeps circling, and I'm like, "Oh, this is definitely right above my house." And the police had blocked off the entire neighborhood, and Fuck. they there was canines out, and they I was like, "Hey, I live right here. Can I just go home?" And they're like, "No, you can't come in or out." And they were out there for hours. So, do you think that was the universe telling you not to watch this? <laughs> well, so what I my, what I did is I went back to work and just sat at my desk and plopped on the fucking movie. Oh <laughs> so like, man! Oh my god! I had to watch it right then. I was like, I so badly want a nap, and I can't. I have to watch this fucking movie. Oh. <laughs> But um, now you can't get the that hour and a half back. Yeah, right. I know. Um, uh, Nathan, what about you? Recommend? Yes, no. Man, it's so hard to say because I I have fun memories of seeing this in the theater, mm -hmm. and I I think I think it's worth watching just to know how silly it is. Sure. Um, 
and especially if you like these two franchises like it it is as bad as the execution is it is an event like i hate batman v superman and i still think it's cool that we got them fighting on screen even though i won't ever watch that movie again (laughs) yeah you know um it is just one of those things where i'm like yeah i guess uh it's neat that this happened but uh it's a bad movie but yeah watch it why not Um, fuck it brandy what about you uh i would feel goofy as fuck recommending this (laughs) if you're like like if you were somebody that watches these kind of movies you already saw it and wish you didn't like all of us so <laughs> sure. i'm just like if it so i'm like if you haven't seen it then it's like this probably isn't your kind of movie so don't watch it that's that's fo- totally true if someone has a drinking game yeah oh, i'm movie, sure there's oh tons God, yeah. tons yeah. of drinking yeah. games yeah for the kills yeah yeah just for the kills or drink every time somebody gets yeeted yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a good one we should make a drinking game to this oh no oh god we'd be shit faced alcohol poisoning i would say i do recommend it yeah a hundred percent because like well, see i recommend with a ton of caveats <laughs> well, no i i'm i'm full both feet planted yeah, like, jenna's over here dying inside I, all these answers uh, full feet planted because up until this point you know tommy lee jones was only known for playing a villain and by the time he gets to this movie oh my and God. he's i mean that whole first half of that movie you're like i don't know harrison ford i mean maybe you did have something to do with Whoa, um bro, it's the wrong movie oh shit we're talking about freddy versus jason again um <laughs> freddy freddy's in the tunnel and he's like i didn't kill those kids oh, give me that <laughs> i don't care that's another amazing sequel yeah. let's film it. um god no fuck no i don't recommend this movie um <laughs> You know how there's that story of when people first saw that short film back in like the 20s called Train Arriving at a Station that people fled <laughs> sure. the theater because they thought the train was literally going to pop out of the screen and run them over? Right. What? Um, I think if you showed those same people this movie, they'd fall asleep. That's hilarious. Like, I don't think they would give a shit. <laughs> so, so, no. I think between both of these franchises, and I'm probably going to get a lot, of bullsh- like a lot of shit for this, but I think there's like maybe four good movies out of both franchises well and i also think i think some of that is because you you did come to them late like there was this year yeah (laughs) like i i I think i've touched on this before but there is something about like sneaking a horror movie that like really endears you to it and that i will always love the friday the 13th movies for those well like i said I, i think um when it comes to nightmare i think one three sure and the reboot are good i actually do like the reboot i did too oh what about new nightmare and new nightmare sorry and new nightmare yeah 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 when it comes to the friday movies i think they're all terrible except for the reboot (laughs) (laughs) that's funny and the reboot yeah i rewatched it recently it's much better than i remember it so um Mm -hmm. yeah that's that's uh Freddy vs. Jason, listener, if you are a staunch defender for either of these two uh, horror icons and you think we are just totally off base with our movie uh, criticism, you can send your feedback in to the Silver Linings playlist at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. Or just email me directly and we can fight. <laughs> 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 I'll put my email out there. Yeah, fight Jen. We can fight about it. Well, there's, there is something <laughs> about the feedback section that gets people hostile because Nathan also threw down the gauntlet with yeah. Jurassic World Fall of the Kingdom. Oh. I fucking dare you, yeah, <laughs> to tell me that this movie's worth watching. I mean, you're always gonna find that one stand. Yeah, yeah, yeah and that's fine. I, you know what? I'm. I will read your feedback on the Is air. It though? Is it? <laughs> um, you can DM us on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter, or over at our subreddit, reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist. Yeah. Um, subscribe, rate, feedback, follow us, all that good stuff. Um, now, is there any other anything we forgot to talk about before we we get out of here? Did we did we want to do a pick me up? A double feature? Oh, that's right. Yeah, we didn't do a pick me up. Um Nathan, you seem eager. Why don't you go ahead and tell me what's your what's your double feature for <laughs> my my double feature for this would actually be the Friday the Thirteenth reboot. Okay, oh. um, I I think it's super underrated. Agreed. I think it's glossy like this movie, yes, but it has is. like <laughs> it's very it's very fun. Takes you back to kind of the meaner roots of the series, but mm-hmm. in a way that's uh, really really well shot and mostly well acted. I think Derek Mears as Jason is excellent. Yes, I agree. I think that movie also has a stunningly aggressively 
terrible boyfriend character. It had, oh, <laughs> the one who delivers my favorite line in cinema. Oh, mm. God. You have stupendous tits. Oh. You have perfect nipple, nipple placement. placement. Yep. What? Yeah. Rewatch that movie if you guys haven't. You know what? Never seen mind. It in a while. Never mind. <laughs> keep going. Yeah, let's let's not dwell on that yeah. one. It's a uh, it's an insane movie and uh I love it. <laughs> yeah. I have a movie. Okay. Yeah, go for it. If you want to see Catherine Isabel be just great ginger snaps Ooh, yes. yeah. yeah so good yeah. yeah a classic a modern classic oh that movie is amazing and she's underused in this movie but mm-hmm. ginger snaps is great it is weird that they make her like the pj souls stand in with the red hat it's very distracting yes i thought the same thing keep, keep going or um if you want to watch a good supernatural, I'm on the series right now, Fear Street. Mm. Oh, oh yes. yeah, I haven't, seen that. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't watched those yet. Me either. So good if you want to watch some modern slasher that pays homage to all this older stuff. Okay, uh-huh. Fear Street. Nice. Okay. Those all three two. of those were shot here, and I'm, st- I have not brought myself to watch them yet. Do you have a favorite one of those, Jim? Oh, I haven't finished the last one, but the second one where it takes place at a summer camp. That's the one I want to see. So yeah, that's the one I want to see. Like, if you want good slasher kids. Having sex, doing drugs, and getting cut up. No, it is. Watch that one. That's the one I want to see because it seems like a Friday oh, movie it is. almost. Yeah, it's yeah. So yeah. Good. Wait, it's a movie or a show? Well, it's it's three movies. Oh. Yeah. yeah, on Netflix. Yeah, it's three movies. Oh, and it's on Netflix. Cool. Yep. Yeah. Yep. All yeah, of them. Mally, what about you? Double feature? Uh, I'm gonna go with another Catherine Isabel flick. Ooh. Okay. 2015's How to Plan an Orgy in a Small Town. Oh, I, I haven't movie. seen that. Is that I? Is that good? It's been on my. It's been on my watch list. I wanted to see I'm that. Not familiar. It's you know, you push play, it'll play the whole <laughs> way through. It won't stop at any time. <laughs> what what uh, a review! Mally, does it does it tell you to flip the DVD over? <laughs> it does not. It does not. Oh my god. Well, actually, I don't know. I streamed it. It might. <laughs> what, do you, what do you got, Brandy? Oh, um, so Kelly Rowland's uh, role in this kind of took me back to Brandy's role in I Know What You Did Last Summer. Oh. Okay. So oh, I still know. Wait, that's part two, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. She was in that one. Okay. I then, yeah, still know one. what you did last summer. Yeah. yeah. That's a, yeah, that's a good one. Okay. Yeah. Another movie with a great singer, terrible acting. Yeah. Uh, They're yeah. remaking that, aren't they? Are they? Yeah, they are. No, thank the, you. As a TV series. Yeah. Pass. Yeah. I, I, w- I wouldn't mind seeing that. I, I like those movies when they first came out. I don't think I ever saw any of those. I liked them. I still know what you did last summer has uh jack one of jack black's first film roles yeah. it's also uh yeah. that's right it's also got uh jeffrey combs he plays the stoner guy at the resort yeah yeah the the white rasta guy which yes. is a, a oh, great geez. a great trope that didn't survive the 90s i'm okay with that i'm okay yeah. with that i don't know why but it was one of those comfort movies for me as a kid i have no idea why ah uh, yes brandy people getting murdered and you just snuggle up in your bed no yeah i do have memories of like just like laying in my mom's bed watching it just being like yeah <laughs> it's, it seems like a lot of big actors start off their careers by playing white rastas or something like right. Brad Pitt, uh, Jack Black, Gary Oldman. <laughs> yeah, let that trope die. Don't bring it back. Yeah, I agree. yeah, I'm fine with that as well. Jared Leto, kind of. Yeah, it's pretty tired. Anyway, um, I, I I'm gonna say you should watch The Fugitive because oh. that's a really cool movie. <laughs> oh hell yeah, hell yeah! And it's right there next to Freddy vs. Jason. <laughs> sure. The fucking HBO Max is light up. So, um, guys, we are successfully almost twice as long as the movie itself. Yeah, so let me get the fuck out of here. Oh um, my god! I have um one last thing, and that is a clue for the movie we are talking about next week. And my clue is that after we release next week's episode, I think I'm gonna get laid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we will see you next week where we're continuing the horror genre um with a with a jam-packed episode that I just know is gonna is gonna be waiting for us. So uh rest in peace, oatmeal as always. Um and but again, Brandy and Jen, thank you guys for coming on. This was a tr- true treat. And I promise you we will get you on a good movie soon. <laughs> yes. Oh, you, do you promise? Doubt it. Doubt it. Yeah, right. You guys hate us. That's a hard doubt. Uh. <laughs> Um, well, all right, let's get out of here, everyone. So, as always... Yeah, thanks for having us on. Oh. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome. Sorry, I was trying to have manners. <laughs> no, you're right. I'm just... And as always, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. We're, we're so long now, I'm just trying to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as always... Excelsior, bitch. I was gonna say Excelsior, bitch. Good. <laughs> My God, he broke him in half. <laughs> Excelsior. 
Excelsior! Excelsior! Oh. Look it up! wraps up another fantastic episode of the Silver Linings Playlist. If you would be so kind, we ask that you leave us some feedback on how we did, plus a like and subscribe. We'll be back next week with another great episode. See ya!